it's just like, so, but anyway, it's okay. But, but that's why you need to get chocolate covered carpet, you know. <laughs> I learned that at Southwest Airlines, you know, so everything, everything that we do is based on what we lear- I learned at Southwest Airlines, you know. I learned what not to do. <laughs> anyway, uh, welcome to Coffee Talk. Uh, they're working on getting us online live, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just start anyway. Um, the Lord has given me a kind of several directions. I got five different subjects this morning. Um, I'll probably get through half of one, you know, but I mean, anyway, I, I have these subjects are really good. And then as the Spirit leads, sometimes he releases me. Um, just so you know, there are intelligence agencies that send people to sit. So I have to be really careful. And I know how they operate. Um, so I have to be really careful. I don't want to put myself into a box where they pin me in and then um, they take away the freedom to be able to talk to you in different platforms. So um, if you notice, I've never, I've never been kicked off of any platform, never been warned, never been in um, you know, Facebook jail or anything, never been warned at all. Um, people who have taken my posts and reposted them have been put in jail. So it's kind of strange. But anyway, the, the Lord has been gracious to just help me because I, I talk in, in, uh, in riddles and I don't allow the algorithms to be kicked in so that it brings up. Uh, and if those of you who are with the, with the intelligence agencies that are here, you know exactly what I'm saying because you've been sent to spy and watch me. But um, the, the, the bottom line is this, is that People get frustrated, like, why doesn't he just tell us? It's like, well, if I did, then you could visit me in jail, you know. But but the truth needs to get out there, but it doesn't have to be shoved down your throat. And sometimes it's better for you to just do your own research with just key words. And let me tell you, I've learned more when I grew up, threw away my diapers and my bottle and started eating steak. I grew up spiritually when I started to just own it, like I was talking about last night. That, that message is something that happened to me. Every message that I preach to you is something I have gone through and I've had to grow up. You know, I call it lip it, lip, lip it up. You know, in other words, stop your little quivering uh, and, and feeling like you're, you're disjointed and separated. You're not separated. You're not disjointed. You're not powerless. you you, you've been, you've been um, approved by God to be in this generation. According to Acts 17, it says that God foreknew who would live in every generation, every name of every person. It also says, and in what country or nation they would be in. So we, we are counted as faithful and trustworthy in this generation, whereas others who have come before us were just there to build but at the end of the age, we are what you would call the finishers. So we're the ones that come in and do the paint job and the crown molding when everyone else has framed the house and, and done the drywall after, of course, you put the plumbing and electricity in because I've seen that done. I'm like, hey, you just drywalled it and uh, there's open pipes. And I mean, this is like I'm telling the contractor, you know, because it's my house. I just paid for it, you know. And you got to tell them, you know, you might want to rip that out and finish the plumbing because the plumber went to lunch and the drywallers came in while he was at lunch. I'm serious. I'm just a flight attendant, you know. But I know like an open pipe is not a good thing. <laughs> and I know bare wires aren't a good thing. It just doesn't go, you know, good, you know. So the, the, the bottom line is, is that I had to grow up. Okay, so... I want to start with something that, that is a right angle turn. It's a curveball. But I want, I want to tell you that I have seen things, I've encountered things that I couldn't file in some sort of subject matter, even as a Christian, based on the fact that uh, I'm, you know, I've been given Bible, I've been, you know, uh, you know like all this theology. And, you know, like things like, like UFOs don't fit into the profile of anything, you know, and you could stretch it and say, well, in Ezekiel, it has the wheel within a wheel. But if you look at that, that's something that, uh, you know, that is in, I saw, I saw things like this in heaven 
And I was told I was never allowed to talk about it ever. So my wife has asked me about something. She goes, well, what about this? And I go, I can't talk to you about that. Don't ask me again. Uh, Because the Lord said, you will never speak this on the earth. But what I saw in the throne room, I go, this kind of seals it up for me. So imagine seeing something in a throne room that kind of like shows you all the conspiracy theories and all the weird stuff. It just puts a rest to it. And then the Lord says, you can't ever talk about this. But what I was allowed, he said, this is what you can say. You can say there's nothing new under the sun. And that's your key, is, is that everything you see, it could be a cheap replication of what a fallen being saw when he was in heaven, and he replicated it. And so what you see down here is a lot of replication, and the governments are claiming it as their own. But it's something that they found, and they're replicating it and calling it classified. Now, I, I eventually will release this after the, you know, these, these, uh, all these officials that are like spilling the beans to Congress right now. This is stuff I've known for 30 years, and I wasn't allowed to talk about it, but I have all the documentation on it. But the Lord told me to preach the gospel. He didn't tell me to talk about all this. But it's becoming apparent now that it's going to be needed for Christians to understand some of these things in order to not be pulled into the, the dialogue. Because they, what they do is they, have, they, they make a narrative and they create a perception and they expect you to just kind of fall in line with what they say. But if you look at the credibility of these people, there, there is none. And I just saw, uh, you know, one of the one of the uh, congressmen just posted what what uh, what Senator Feinstein just she just posted before she passed away. She said, "I just got the the newest the newest uh, uh, vaccine, and everybody should get it." And two days later, she died. Okay, so at what point? Now this is, happens all the time. And, and you, that's what I'm trying to tell you. You need to study. You need to be more mindful. I, I'm constantly, I spend hours a day researching stuff that you never hear me talk about. But I've been doing it for 30 and 40 years. I have to listen to the Lord and wait for him to tell me what to say. But when I say the truth, see, like I said last night, they're not worried about someone speaking the truth. They're worried about people believing the truth and getting in a group to where it becomes we the people again. That's the thing that the people are, that, that's what's going on. So if everybody got together and said, you know what, this system's broken, bye-bye. If, if everybody did that, they, they wouldn't be able to do anything. But everybody's got to do it. It can't be just like a January 6th thing. Because they're just going to come after you one by one. But if it's a whole nation... Then you just send them out in a raft into the Gulf, you know. I mean, to Cuba, to Guatemala. But I don't, I don't, they won't even get a plane ride there. The sharks will just have to take them. No, what I'm saying is, is, that, is that truth on its own is not really a, a threat unless it's received and it becomes unified within a group of people. And so... I need to tell you that I have seen things. I've encountered things just like you have. And if you talk to people, they have seen a lot of things. And almost everybody has seen something. I mean, every pilot uh, that, you know, most most individuals just don't talk about it. See, there's a fear. There's a fear of talking about it. And that's the demonic. The fear of talking about it is the demonic. Just as much as these things are demonic. The fear of it of not talking about it is the demonic keeping it so that they can continue on with what they're doing and you're just kind of like roll over and uh, submissive to it. And that's what we've done. If you look at everything, if you look at what's happening and you really are allowed to see in the spirit and what's happening, you realize 
that the trafficking has become more advantageous to them than abortion. So all of a sudden, they just like throw it back at each state. Well, it's because they've already, they have a shell game. Look at you all just looking at me. Do you, are, you get, are you catching what I'm saying? Is that, that it's not the drug trade. It's not any of these things that are lucrative. It's human beings tra- being trafficked is where the money is. Look at you all. You, do, you, do you all not like, you need to study The human being is the most expensive thing. Now, come on, all of you, like, nod your heads at least. You've got to know what I'm talking about, right? Okay, so so with with things that that happen, things that bleed through and you see, you have to understand that um, you think you, you think you're, you're seeing something and you think you understand it. You think that you're getting to where you can, you can, have closure with it, but it's, it's way bigger than that. And it's a lot of things are hidden from us because we can't handle it. Now at a certain point, if I go past a certain point, I'm going to get a visit. I have to walk this, this line where I get you to be smart enough to pray and ask God for wisdom and then seek things out. And just remember that I can't even tell the difference now between a video that's fake and a video that's real. So just so you know, I have to, I have to be very careful because of the disinformation. And so when people try, they offer to help me in these these agencies, I say, I don't want your help. The reason why is, is I don't want somebody coming in and saying, hey, I want to give you some stuff. I worked for this, this, and this, and just so you know, you're right on. And here's some more information. It's, it's a, the whole thing's a scam. That's how, that's how they discredit you. A lot of these things, there's people that come in that are sent in to give you information, to get you off on a rabbit trail, and then they discredit you. The whole thing was a scam. And this is what happens in churches. Witches are literally, I know because I've talked to them. They were assigned to get on the worship team. They were assigned to be the secretary and then have an affair with the pastor. This is not hearsay. I have names. Okay, so the witches wanted to get the pastor to fall. They wanted to, they tried to get on the board and they're witches. And they, they had meetings and determined, okay, you're going to go here and you're going to be a flagger. I'm not making this up. You're going to do the flags. And you're going to start to like murmur. And you're going to get on the worship team and murmur and separate. Get the pastor to, to fall into sin. Okay, so I have seen things. I have seen, I've, 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 I've seen these things. I've had to dodge things in the air that the controllers didn't see. And I'm not talking about one or two. I'm talking about like 30 to 40 of these objects at one time, multiple times with co-pilots asking them, do you see what I see right now? He goes, yeah. I go, do you know what it is? No. How many are there? About 30. How many times... And you call the controller. Well, there's nothing up there. You're by yourself. How many times have I heard that? And why do they respond to the name of Jesus? When I address them in the name of Jesus, why does a physical light or object, metallic object, why does it obey the name of Jesus and do a right angle turn? When these are, this is hardware. This is coffee talk. So, for all extensive purposes online, this is just ma- I'm just making all this up. It's just fiction, you know. And then we just stay on the air. So I can go way into depth with this, but I think that this is just to show you that Jesus, after he was resurrected, he 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 went around Jerusalem for 40 days 
and he preached, and nobody stopped him. You know Herod heard about it. You know that Pilate heard about it. You know that all the centurions and all the, you know, all the king's men, you know, everybody knew that this was happening, right? And so he was walking around in his body, right? Because Thomas didn't believe so. Thomas had to touch his wounds and everything, right? So there, it was a real body, right? Okay, so he preached on the kingdom. He chose to preach on the kingdom of God, it says in book of Acts chapter 1, for 40 days. If he had a subject, that's the one he chose, was the kingdom of God. And that's what Jesus in person told me. He said, you ought to take a hint from that, that if you got 40 extra days of ministry, choose wisely what you would pick as a subject, because I picked the kingdom of God. So he preached for 40 days on the kingdom of God, and he ate with the disciples, he was physical, and he would get up and walk through the wall. And the dinner wouldn't stick to the wall. <laughs> do, do you understand what I'm saying? So somehow his body composition was able to separate the, the molecules and the atoms to, to flow through a physical wall, separate and go between the molecules and the atoms. And, and be able to go through clean, in, a clean, in a clean walk without leaving it a physical residue on the wall. You know, and that's just like the miracle of the Pentagon. There's no wing marks for an airplane in the Pentagon, you know. And there's no, there's no airplane parts. I don't know if you know that. So that's just as much a miracle. moving out of that cave. But what I'm trying to show you is, is that we don't really understand all the realms. And we think, okay, it's spiritual, it's physical, it's this, it's that. And we think we have it sealed up. But, but the spirit of God is a sevenfold spirit. So we know that there's at least seven dimensions. And you're happy with your three. With maybe an added fourth, you know, if you're brave, you know. But when you start seeing things disappear and reappear and you see... Uh, creatures and objects and, and things happening in your life. You, have, you wake up like I have and had something sitting on your chest. I'm like, how did you get in here and what made you think that you can do this to me? Yeah, scratch your heads. See, ministers won't tell you this stuff because they, they don't want to level the, the playing field because they want, they want to have... The, the feeling that they, they are looked upon in authority, and if they lose any kind of credibility in their mind, this is all in their mind, They're, they are set in the church by God. So they don't have to defend their position. But for some reason, ministers start to feel rejection, they start to feel insecurities, and they have to start pushing themselves forward or manipulating people to listen to them because they won't listen to them on their own, on their own free will. But see, your gift makes room for you. So the gift should cause people to want to fill up a building instead of you just like have, having to, uh, you know, manipulate people. So now I don't, I don't see how it's going to work that you know, all my friends are charging 85 to $200 for what we're doing here. And I'm actually giving you, you know, you're actually making money this weekend, you know. <laughs> but what I'm saying is, is how long will, thank you. But that's because, um, that's because I see it as a trend that will eventually not work anymore. Yeah. It's, it's just, it's just closing it up. It's a slow death. Because the bottom line is, is you should be able to come because you want to come and you shouldn't have to pay. I mean, we, we paid for this, you know, and I'm telling you, the offerings don't even pay for the venue, let alone the hotel and everything else. So it's not like the offerings or the book table or anything. It's, it's totally a miracle. It, it's like every month, God does huge miracles from people that are spoken to. It's individuals. It's not like a, a, a group of a thousand. It doesn't matter how many people show up. I'm not like calculating how much is going to come into the offering. I, we don't live by the offering. Okay, but the bottom line is, is if, if you start to do these things, it's, it's, it closes it down to where it, it what, it's what I call a coffin box. 
In other words, there's a, there's a stall speed for the airplane, a low stall speed, and there's a high stall speed. So you can actually have a high stall speed and a low stall speed. That's where the, the flow of the air, air is over your wings so fast that the wing isn't designed anymore to fly. So certain wings won't fly past the speed of sound. So if you get to that place, it's, there's a separation that starts happening, and then it doesn't cause lift anymore. So you can stall the airplane. Air, like yesterday, yesterday I was doing the air show, and one of the turns, I was really pulling hard, and you know, Chris just chirped in. He goes, hey, let, let off a little bit, because he said, this airplane isn't like the other ones I've flown, where you know, it doesn't stall at a high speed. So he just reminded me, hey, you know, keep it at this. And so I just let off a little bit. But he said, you know, there's a coffin corner, they call it, um, where there's certain airplanes where you can go too fast or too slow, but they start closing in as you go higher. And before you know it, you've got a, like a margin of just five knots. So you could overspeed or, or uh, you could stall both ways with just five knot difference. The U-2 spy plane has like a three knot coffin box. So what happens is, is essentially when you go into certain realms, you start you start to close in on your margin of error because it's so streamlined in the other realms that Jesus operated in all those realms, but he didn't really like talk about it. He just did it. But, but he, he showed up and when he was done talking, he just disappeared. When people were gonna throw him off the brow of the hill and it wasn't his time yet, he just walked through them because it wasn't time yet. If he went to a funeral and the little girl was, was young, it wasn't time for her to die. He just, he just reversed it. He raised people from the dead because it wasn't their time yet. He, re, he, just, he would ruin funerals because it wasn't God's will. He would ruin the devil's mess. He went around doing good and, and healing everyone that was oppressed of the devil. He went around reversing and that's why he said, this is for the glory of God. He didn't, wasn't saying that God made him sick so I can heal him. He was saying that these people are sick, but this has come to our attention now for the glory of God. That's what he was saying. If you read it in the original language, it wasn't saying that God made him sick so Jesus can go around and make him healthy. Okay, so all of this is just my introduction to tell you this, is that you're going to see things at times that are interdimensional. So... Uh, just so you know, the whole alien agenda is, is not from another planet. They're interdimensional. And that is a direct quote from, from papers, from, from go governmental papers, from people that are, that are in the know. They know they're from another dimension. And those portals were opened up a long time ago at, at the end of World War II. And I can tell you who it was. It was, it was Hitler. And all those scientists were brought over here and dumped off at Los Alamos, all 41 of them, including von Braun. And all the stuff that was in those tunnels over there in those factories, they were round disks, some of them, moving out of this cave. Okay, so in the coming days, as other people speak, and then, then they can take the hit for it because then I can say it because I don't want to stand before Congress because I've already stood before God, is that the deception that's coming doesn't have to be a deception to you all, but you have to, you have to not put your head in the sand just because you can't file UFOs or some of these creatures like Bigfoot and Loch Ness and all that stuff. You, you have to look at it how it is in the Bible that there are other realms and that there, there's a way to interact in different dimensions without uh, competing or colliding with each other. I mean, if I walk into that wall, I'm gonna collide with it and the wall's gonna win. And then Ryan's gonna have to speak this morning. Okay, but... There are times where certain things have happened to me that were totally supernatural. Okay, so think of this. You know, um, Chris, Chris that you met last night, he's actually a lieutenant colonel, Chris. He's retired. But he, this guy, he showed me the data of a, an engagement he had 
with another airplane, another fighter jet in an engagement with his F-18. And um, they, I, have the, I have the actual data from the computer. It shows he, he watched this other adversary airplane go right through him. And he, doesn't even, he didn't even believe like he does now. Okay, it shows this. When they sat him down and showed him the engagement with this, with this adversary, it shows from every angle, from all the, all the classified data that they have that we don't know about, it showed that that, that F-5 adversary airplane went right through his... It showed, I have the picture. It completely went through. Metal and metal went through each other. They said it's plus or minus three feet, which the wing is longer than that. Does everybody follow me or do I have to like, can I go? This is somebody you just saw right here. Now, he has the data. He was pulled in. This is what we saw. We don't know how, you, how did this happen, but it's a plus or minus three feet. And it shows him completely merged. That's happened to me. That's happened to Rachel. Rachel went through, uh, somebody went through an intersection. The car went right through her car. And she found herself in the media and sitting there and saying, what just happened? Rachel, right here. And, and some of you have had things like this happen. So there are times where certain things supersede the laws that are physical. So your eyes can do that too, especially if you see out the side of your eye. The way that your eye is shaped, you can see into other dimensions on the corners of your eyes because of the way the sh of the shape, because it has to do with light. So a lot of these things cloak themselves so that the light doesn't come to your eyes, but it's still there. It's just there's no return. Is this too much for you? I know, I know you think I'm Mr. Rogers or something, but I study. You know, I was going to be an aerospace engineer at the academy. And the Lord hijacked me, and, and he told me to be a, uh, be a servant of God, you know. I got saved. But I could, still be, I could still be a scientist if I want to, just like you can. But the only thing is, is that science doesn't discredit God. It confirms these other realms. Because science is just observation. Okay, so your eyes are shaped a certain way. So if you, if you, if you study, you'll see that the rainbow colors that we see is just one-sixth of the pie chart. So our eyes see one sixth of light. So that means there's five sixths left that we don't see. So other things like sensors that, that the government has developed in these companies, uh, the industrial complex has, has developed, this, these, these things are classified, but you can see some of this stuff coming out into your, your security cameras now. You can see infrared. And so a lot of times we see these entities on our security cameras at our headquarters, these beings, uh, you know, trying to get in or come into the building, and I'm alerted of it. I got eight by ten glossies of these things, and we even named them. And they're 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 demons, but they're different shapes and sizes, and they're half animal, half half something, half this, just like the Greek gods, you know. But see, we don't believe in that stuff, right? You know, so uh, the Christians just put their head in the sand. It's like, well, I don't know what to do with this. So they, they discredit it. Well, what if, what if it doesn't go away? Like, what if you have to deal with it? So let's deal with it with the name of Jesus and with authority. And, and let's let God explain it, okay? All right, so uh, Jesus essentially demonstrated that he could walk in all those realms, even just as being a servant, as a son of man. So he could walk on water, but he didn't do anything as a son of God. He did it as a son of man so that he could say, what I've done, you will do. So if the spirit of God allows you to supersede a physical law, then you will do that. But it won't be because of faith. And, and this is what I feel like I should talk to you about first. This is first subject because I kind of set it up now. Is that there is a realm, there is a realm of God that doesn't involve your faith. And see, I know that probably, probably they're going to want my faith, my faith certificate back from, from my faith degree. There are certain things that God will give you that doesn't involve money, doesn't involve giving. It doesn't involve your faith. Now, how many times have you heard this? But do you realize that you can be healed and have no faith? 
do you know that God could prosper you and you don't even give? Please, I know your neck is hurting. You have to say yes because it's like you've been so programmed that we are back in works. We're back. We, we, we've migrated into works and no one wants to call it. You want to know why? Because the Christian cartel says it's working. So it's working. It's, it's, it's generating numbers and wealth. So it becomes corporate. But the Holy Spirit doesn't have anything to do with it. For instance, do you know there's no prosperity gospel? There, there is nowhere in the Bible where there's a prosperity gospel, just like there's not a healing gospel or a deliverance gospel. So I'm telling you, and all my friends are watching, they're going to throw bottles right now, but you cannot specialize in one of the seven topics of the gospel. You can't like specialize in one of them because it is no harder to raise the dead than it is uh, to cast out demons. And you, you can't say, well, I'll cast out demons, you raise the dead. They're, they're, every one of those things is because of Jesus Christ. Now think about what I just said, is that, okay, who wants to raise the dead today? We're going out in the streets. Who wants to raise the dead? Nobody raised their hand. Okay, who wants to um, proclaim de the debt-free, debt free, you know, the jubilee, which is part of the gospel? So you'll do that, okay. And then um, who wants to cast out devils? You know, and it's like then, okay, so you can cast out devils, but nobody wants to, to raise the dead. Okay, why? Because none of them, but none of them, none of them have to do with faith like it's been taught. See, your faith is who you are because of your relationship with God, and God is working with you, confirming his word. He's confirming his word. It, he's doing the miracle. If it doesn't happen then the connection was not made. But it's not God's fault. And see, I'm telling you because I was in heaven and I don't want to go back and hear this again. I was given a second chance. I was given another chance at doing this right. So there are all kinds of people that are trying to manipulate me into what I'm doing and what I'm believing. But they don't understand. I met the king of kings and he told me how to do it right. And he gave me another chance. So back into my body I went. And the productivity you see is not because I was born in a manger with shepherds around me. I don't have a halo over my head. What happened was, is I was given another chance, which hardly anybody's ever given, to do it right. And I was coached. I was given all the answers to the test and then sent back to do the test again. But now I've got all the answers to the test. And the Lord said, tell everybody the answers. And, and, and simplify it and, and bring correction that there is no prosperity gospel. So you can't just like, well, I was an ex-warlock, so I'm going to do deliverance. Well, Paul, well, what about Paul? Paul was a Jew and he was sent to the Gentiles. Totally a fish out of water. He said, I don't come to you with enticing words of man's wisdom but and the demonstration of power of God. He couldn't rely on his his credibility as a Pharisee to people that were, you know, Gentiles, the unclean people. He was sent to them. Do you get what I'm saying? Moses was sent into the desert for 40 years to escape. After 40 years in Pharaoh's court, being groomed for the, he was the son of Pharaoh because he was adopted. So he was next in line to be Pharaoh. He was an orator. He was, you know, do you realize that that was the top of the learning was in Egypt? Cairo. I mean, all the, 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 the learning facilities that were there, the, everything was there, just like in Corinth. Just like when Paul was, you know, was there, they were expecting him to, to, to say these profound things. And he, he's, God chose Moses after he couldn't talk anymore because he could talk to the goats and the camels, but he couldn't talk English anymore or Hebrew. Think about it. He couldn't talk. But he was trained to be in order to be the next Pharaoh, which was public speaking was, you know, the main thing. Do you understand what I'm saying? God put him in the desert to where he could talk to the animals. He was Mr. Dr. Doolittle, you know. And, but he couldn't. He, he said, you know, I can't talk. Can you get some, you know, can you get one of my relatives to speak for me? Right? Remember? That was not a joke. So then God could use him. 
okay? All right, so this, this is, is what the problem is right now in the body of Christ, is that, is that we have to return back to the simplicity of what God laid out to a people that were in the Bible that were third grade education level at best. They were agrarian culture, and it was determined it's about third grade at best level of intelligence. So Jesus preached to them and was able to communicate So you look at the progression, all the realms that we, that we have around us, and we don't understand any of them, but we should. So the eye, the way the eye is shaped, out here in this area right here, you'll see movement at times, shadows and things like that. But when you go and you look directly at it, it will not be there, but it's still there. Because uh, the way the light works is that the fall has degraded not only our eyes, but the way that light works is it works as, as a, what is coming into your eye. It's a return. It bounce, it's like radar. It has to bounce. Something has to have a return. And then that light of that bouncing from an object back to your eye, it builds the image inside your eye. It's even upside down. And then it's righted. By your brain. Is this too much? Okay, so things are there in the spirit realm. You just don't see them. They're, it's all around us. Okay, so classified stuff, there, there, there's, there's, there is, they do not want everyone to understand certain things. Because if you're in the know, then they can't lie to you about certain things. And so there's an edge. And they, they used to say it's, well, you have the advantage over the enemy, you know, what, whoever that is, you know. And I mean, it's pretty bad that I have to go to Ukraine to get my tax return, you know. <laughs> it used to be Iran, you know, and it's like, you know, I'm just saying, you, you know, is there anybody else here that sits and does the math about this stuff? You got to be kidding me. <laughs> All right. So what's going on around me? And so first thing, the first thing the Lord wanted me to answer this morning. What's going on around me? Well, if you knew and you understood that, you would understand possibly what's, why, why you're going through what you're going through. Because what is around you is influencing you. But the whole key of Christianity, the whole key of me coming back and doing what I'm doing is to give you the perspective that what is going on inside of you is far greater in every way. The realms have to be submissive to what's going on around you. Okay, so you have the layers like a cake of the different realms. So you have these layers, and you, you take the hard data of what your body feels like right now, like when you look at your, your bank account, and you, you, it doesn't add up to what your bills are. That, then that's hard data, right? That's hard data. But what if you are given information that's skewing the reality, and it's really not the reality at all? So if you, how I know, how I know that I'm hitting, hitting a sore spot with the truth is when I'm called a conspiracy theorist. You know, that's how I know because that's what I would do if I was on the other side. I would want to discredit if they were getting hot on something. When you find out that, that their proposed solution causes more deaths than the, than just leaving it the way it was, whatever that was. You know. the, the, in other words, like if you look at the numbers, they don't lie, except when they skew the facts and the numbers. And they give you, they build a narrative. They build a, a perception 
And as long as you stay in that, you're controllable. But if you start questioning and saying, well, I just saw something out of the corner of my eye. Now, I've had stuff happen to me that I, I can explain now, but when it happened, I'm talking about not very long ago. And I'm like, Lord, I have no idea what that was. I have no idea what just happened. And I don't know, I don't, I don't know anything. And he goes, well, because you admitted that, I'm going to tell you because you're humble about it. So you can't always interpret what's going on because you might just be seeing the physical. Or if you're feeling emotion, it's amazing. Just like I, I, I think that was in San Antonio. I've been in so many cities these last two weeks. But, you know, I have a pastor friend. He said, I want, I want to give you this espresso coffee. It's from Cuba. And um, he, like, went through this whole ritual. It took him, like, 20 minutes. I'm like, can you just get it to me? I'm like, I got it. He says, well, I want you to take this before you pray because it will increase your anointing. That's what he said. He's watching. So he presented it to me like it was the communion cup. And I went like this. I felt a rush, but it wasn't the Holy Spirit. And then all of a sudden, all the things I was torqued about, all the, you know, the irritating feelings I had, and, you know, uh, you know the day's like, it's only 8 o'clock in the morning, and I got 45 things I have to do today, or else Warrior Notes is not going to be up to par for the day. I mean, like, like this guy and Mike, they, they answer thousands of emails a day. They, they, like, they, they love coming here, but they, they tell me, they go, if I miss a day, it's my, my job is like extended out through the next week, just getting caught up again. So that's why, thank God we have Wi-Fi on the airplane, you know. <laughs> but, but what I'm saying is, is that Warrior Notes would be behind if I didn't stay with my bullet points. And then I got to make sure that everybody under me is doing what I've asked them to do because it's essentially I have to do it if they don't do it. So if something falls short, it comes right back to me. So I have to make sure that I'm, I'm a leader that I'm, I'm making sure that if I'm going to let someone else have this in a certain area, I got to make sure they understand because I've had to go and, ha- and, and take hours that I didn't have to do something that I actually paid somebody to do. Okay, and so I'm like, well, what, what happened here so we can fix it? Okay, so when you do that, you're managing things. But what happens is, is you take a cup of espresso and then you love everybody and, and you can't remember what you were worried about. No, think about it. Like, I'm just telling you that some things are temporary, but they are real. I mean, how many people have you fallen in love with before you got married? For instance, how many... You know how many people have promised me millions of dollars? And I still had to work for 30 years because they didn't come through, you know? Okay? So these were people that were God told them to do this. Okay? Okay? So you you know this stuff. That's why I'm not, I'm not, I'm preaching to the choir. What I'm saying is, is that the perception that you're, that you might have might not be exactly what's really happening because these things are cloaked. In other realms, they're hiding behind other, other levels, but they're around you, but you can't put your finger on, on it because they're, they're cloaked from your senses. Does everybody follow me? Yes. Okay, so there's things that are here in this room that will show up on sensors because we have, we have those. Uh, they're declassified and they're in your home, but they're actually spying on you. That always goes over well. So that's why I walk around the house. I say, I love the CIA. I love IRS. I always pay my taxes. Kathy, aren't you excited we're going to pay our taxes and everything? We're gonna give them a cut, little extra, you know. I love the CIA. I love the FAA. I love the FAA. You know? And I do. I love the FAA. They actually keep you safe. But the IRS, you know, is like I, I pay to Caesar what's Caesar's, you know. Uh, but what I'm saying is, is that a lot of things you think are for your benefit but they're for someone else's benefit. 
but they give you enough information to let you, to let you leave everything alone. But if you start asking questions, then you're a conspiracy theorist. Why? Because you're getting close. You're getting too close. But that's okay as long as you don't talk about it. But if you start talking about it, they're going to get on you and discourage you. Now, be a good little boy. And then that started to happen to me. I started getting calls from my friends. I said, why did you come to, to my state and you didn't ask for permission? You, you preached in my state and you didn't ask for permission. I go, well, I didn't know. God didn't tell me that you were in charge. I mean, I'll call Ron DeSantis before I call you. I'm serious. You think you're laughing, but I'm serious. I'm like, this guy sat in the same class as I did, the same school I did, Rama. And he said, from now on, I'm the apostle in Florida, and you, you have to ask me for permission, and I will open the doors for you. I go, you know what? Nice knowing you. You all hear me? Okay. So if somebody tells you there are no UFOs, well, then you know there are. I mean, just be like your kids. Don't touch that. <laughs> Listen, I'm not a, I, I didn't have kids. Me and Kathy didn't have kids. But if I did, I'd be like, do not touch that lawnmower. Do not cut that grass. <laughs> do not make your bed. You will be grounded for a week if you make that bed. <laughs> do not do your homework. Just like Elijah did Elisha. Don't follow me. Even though I told you, you got to be with me to get my mantle. I'm going to Bethel. You stay here. Oh, no. See? It works, doesn't it? Okay. So, it's, it's, yeah. So, he's not going to get robbed of that. Okay. So, neither are you. Okay. So, I'm asking you, so we can go on to the, the next subject. But I'm asking you to be honest with yourself and realize that there's stuff going on around you that even though you can't see it, I just got a message Is it from the CIA. Let's see. <laughs> no. Oh, thank you, Kathy. She's my strongest concordance. Huh? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Rachel. <laughs> okay. I ask questions, and I don't shut up. The reason why is, is that the demons have to know that they're not going to be able to slow you down and stop you. They, the, whole, the whole idea about what's going on around you is, is they operate under the benefit of being cloaked. If they are uncloaked, they have no power to operate any longer. They're found out, and so you know their, their, you know their, their battle strategies. We're not ignorant, right, of, our, of his battle strategies, is what Paul said, or Peter. The, he, he seeks who he may devour. He's, he's going around, but we're not ignorant of his devices, it says. But I see that we are. I mean, as a general statement. Not all of us, and especially Warrior Notes people are not. So just so you know, I'm preaching. I'm not preaching to you. I'm preaching to them. So I understand you're, you're, you understand all this. But this is going to go for 30 years. And hopefully we won't have the same president, you know, by that time. <laughs> I'm watching all your faces to see if somebody starts like quivering and <laughs> get a nervous twitch, you know. All right, so how, how, how you can sense that something's going on is when you encounter certain people, um, you realize that they're not fully human. Did he just say that? Yes, I did. <laughs> because they, they have, they have, they have uh, snake eyes, they have slitted eyes, but they didn't have them when they got on board the airplane. But then when I went to, to ask them for their drink order, they went to slits, and it was like a python, and they were reptilian. Yeah, I did say that. Okay, now, I have had this happen with a pastor. 
and I, what I was doing is I was having lunch with him. I can name the restaurant in the city, but I won't because I might be watching. But I said, listen, the Lord tells me that you have a girlfriend and you're, and you're married. And what are you doing? And when I said that to him, he said, I knew the Lord would tell you. I go, okay. So that obviously didn't help. You know, that didn't encourage you in the right direction. His eyes went to slits and he looked like a, a python. So I'm telling you this so that you can understand when I'm talking about UFOs and Bigfoot and all this stuff and all these different things you see crawling in the walls of your house at, at different times and you just like, what was that? And then it's not there. And uh, you hear voices and you stuff like that. It's not that you're crazy. People are crazy that don't believe this stuff. Okay, but I took a picture. I took a picture of him. I was the assistant. I took a picture of it and showed it to him. He goes, yeah, they do that sometimes. That's what he said. They do that sometimes. I said, can I cast that out of you? And at the restaurant, I said, just put your hand across the table. And I just went like this. Two fingers, not even the whole hand. I didn't breathe on him. I didn't take an offering. I just went. I said, go in the name of Jesus. The thing left him and the eyes went back to normal. Just like that. Okay, I'm telling you this. I'm not making this up, and this really happened, but it was physical. But it was a spiritual thing that was going on with him. Now, that man in church services, he would point at me, and I would go flying 20 feet. People, a whole lines of people. But what he was doing was every week he would go to a certain minister that has that manifestation. He would sit in the services and come back, and he'd be like, that would be on him, that, that, that man's... And then it would go away, and then he'd go back and have another dip of it, come back and go operate it. But the whole time, the gifting and the anointing that was on him, it, it, was, it was separate from the character that he needed to walk in to sustain that. So the character wasn't there, but the anointing and the gifting was there. So you, you, can, do, you, can, you can live a dual life under that. But if you start talking about the presence and the glory, then you, your character has to be right or you end up like Ananias and Sapphira. Does everybody understand what I just said? Okay, so what's operating around you, you have to realize that, that to understand what's really going on is you have to have confrontation with the enemy. You have to bring it to a head, which no one wants to do. You know, so there's people who go to cars and say, I need some answers. Why, is it, why, do, you, why do you admit there's 85,000 children missing? You have their names and you, you have no explanation where they went. I need some answers today. And then the answers don't come. But then all of a sudden, people that start doing that, they start like having all kinds of audits and things start happening to them. Okay, so that brings me to my next subject is you got to understand what's around you, but it's multi-dimensional. So you might have something happening to you that has, was initiated four generations ago that, that was not taken care of. Now, don't even write me and waste your digital ink. Now, listen to me. The devil has to be slapped around. Your dog sometimes doesn't listen to you. Your cats never listen to you, but your dogs sometimes don't listen to you. Because the cats are actually conspiring to take over the world. It's just a matter of time. And they write each other, yeah, they're weakening. It's just a matter of time now. You know, they have it all played out, so they just play it out. But they ain't going to listen to you because they own everything. But the dog is like, the dog wants to please you, but sometimes can't. Okay, but a dog, just because you tell them something, doesn't mean that they're absolutely going to do it immediately and continue to do it. You have to reinforce it. And so then there's your children. <laughs> that you got to let them walk into the wall instead of just taking your word for it that there's a wall there or that, you know, that you're going to be like a crispy critter if you stick your finger in that, you know, or, you know what I mean? I mean, it's adults too. (laughs) 
The first thing you do when you get into the uh, jet aircraft is you set the parking brake. Because if you don't do that, when you start up engine one, there's enough power, you're going to start moving at idle with one engine. And you're going to find out why you're supposed to set the parking brake. Because the little line guy that's going like this, stop, 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 <laughs> as the nose of the airplane's coming up to his belly. In other words, even as an adult, things need to be reinforced a couple of times in order to get them established. So in the transition to this next talk, coffee talk, you have to understand that some things are layered so that these things are cloaked very deep. And you're encountering, now I know this, I know, I know people in this room right now that they're dealing with stuff that their, their grandfather should have taken care of and didn't. Okay, so because of that, that little demon is like a dog that's gotten away with it. They're going to be very diligent to continue to enforce a curse that has been broken by Jesus Christ. You can't say that because Jesus died on the cross and I believe in him and I'm born again, you can't say that the demons are just going to leave you alone. Because the people that say that are a mess. The people that are like preaching all this stuff, they hide it, but I've seen it. They're no better off because the devil is always testing boundaries. So you got to understand what's around you, but it might be layers deep. And if your grandfather didn't take care of it, and I, I'm telling you, I've, I've done interviews. I've done interviews with my family. I've talked to them. And the, I've had my dad say, well, this is what I learned from my grandfather, or, you know, which is his father, my, my grandfather. And I watched how these things pop up. Okay, so I was smart enough because of the Spirit of God, not because I was smart enough. I started to deal with stuff that I saw, like, I'm not going to do this. Well, I'm not going to have a child out of wedlock. Okay, so I stopped it even though it happened in, in my family line. So what it, when, it, when I stopped it, I got all my other brothers and sisters born again. But they all, they all got pregnant. Except for my brother. He didn't get pregnant because he's Mr. Potato Head. You know, he's a, he's a man. But what I'm saying is, is that it, it, it's, it fanned out around me. And, and it, the, it was collateral damage now. Out. Okay, so... You got to know that these other realms, the demonic is packed in down here and they're going to work against you. You can't even just float. You, you are going downstream very fast if you're not paddling. You got to paddle just to stay even, Stephen, because the, the current is against you. So everything goes toward chaos. It doesn't, your room doesn't self-clean. Your, your, your house doesn't self-clean. Your children don't correct themselves. In other words, everything goes to chaos if you look away. I mean, it happened to me yesterday. It happened to me every day. I looked at a gauge. I looked out the window, and the airplane knew it and started doing something I didn't want it to do. It goes, it doesn't fix itself. It goes toward chaos. Everything goes toward, when you leave home and you come back, you're like, oh my God, I've only been gone a couple of days. How could you do this in just two days? How could this happen? It's because, I, and I know this is good for you. I know that you got to take this medicine. You got to get this is when I was in heaven and I was looking back, I didn't want to come back because of what I'm talking about right here. Because I said, you know what? If you're not on your game as a Christian, there is no way you're going to make any headway. It, it can't be, well, I'm, in, I'm, I'm wrapped up in Christ. Well, the devil's gnawing at your butt. <laughs> I'm serious. Like, you got a T-Rex. You think it's your pet, it's your pet dog. It's a, it's a raptor. It, it, you know, like, you, don't, you can't. Did you ever see that? Did you ever see that commercial where that, it, it's, it's about a, a, vi, a vision center commercial where, you know, for eyeglasses. It shows a lady coming to the door. She thinks it's her dog that wants to let back in. It's a raccoon. And the raccoon comes in, is sleeping on her bed, and he's, she's petting it. And it's a commercial like, you need to go ahead and get your, your, your eyes checked. You ever see it? And this is what we're doing. We're accepting things in 
and it, they're cloaked, and they're not what you think they are. Okay, so all of you, the only re- listen to me, the only reason I'm still alive is because I decided that neutral was not a position. Paul said, run the race as, as though you're going to win it. I mean, he said that. I'm going to run as though I'm going to win it, that I'm going to win the prize. But the prize is, is that I've ob- obtained him, but then by obtaining him, I have obtained the inheritance of God for God of the body. So I'm reclaiming people. Jesus has done it, but now it is, it, I am called to gather people together in unity and preach the good news so that people come into unity and so that they can start beating up the devil and start taking back territory. If you don't do that, someone else will have to do that. But there's not enough people right now to have an overthrow. Because if we had overthrow in this nation through the body, through the church, the things that have happened wouldn't have happened. I know that. I know that. That's what I saw on the other side. So you got to know what's going on around you. Okay, so in the transition time now into the next one, I, got, I need my phone back, if you don't mind. I'll just buy you one. I mean, who was? Oh, is, did she get it all set up? Okay. Yeah, there it is. Okay. All right. What I saw on the other side as well is, is that everybody is essentially, their mi- the mindset is waiting for someone to rise up so they can follow them. And what happens is, is the people that are supposed to do something that are waiting for someone else, they default. So, like, like uh, I could choose any one of you, and I could say, like, like so, so, for example, God chose this lady to, to, to uh, proclaim a certain, a certain thing and then um, reinforce it, write a book, write a study guide, travel, reinforce that thing. And it starts to, 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 to gain a group of people that's bringing correction in a certain area. Okay, but she, for whatever reason, it might be she has crazy relatives, she might have crazy children, she uh, might really honestly have counted the cost and said, hey, no way I'm gonna do that, which is what I do when people come to me and say they're called to be an apostle, I, I talk them out of it. I talk them out of being a prophet. I talk them out of the ministry. I see if I can talk them out of it. Because uh, the cost is a lot greater than what's being presented. And so then people get disappointed when they, when they get bruised up and cut up because I'm word of faith and that's not supposed to happen, you know. I'm supposed to be prospering. I'm supposed to be, you know, God, devil can't touch me. And then when he does, you're trying to figure it out. But then if you read Job, you find out that God was bragging about you. And he picked the fight for you because he trusts you. But you fold because you don't understand what's going on in the other realm. So if she says no, then it's going to go to her. Okay, but that was God's will. Just like, you know, if you remember, God did choose Saul as the king. But then it defaulted to David. Then all of a sudden, on your throne will sit the Messiah. You know, and the prophecies are coming forth and, you know, the son of David and, you know, have mercy on me, Messiah, son of David. But it's like Saul was the first one picked. So all of a sudden... You know, if you remember before that, God wanted to be the king of Israel, and he didn't even want a person. So he let Saul happen. That didn't work out. So then David comes, you know. Okay, so all of a sudden, she becomes God's will. But it's like she was prophesied nationwide on TV that she was supposed to do this, and she didn't do it. It's like, well, then did that prophet miss it? No. So she ends up being the one, but then she, for whatever reason, uh, says, no, I'm not going to do this, or whatever. So it goes to her. But her immune system's compromised, and she dies early. So it goes to her. Okay, now, this is God's perfect will, but if you look at the progression, it's all, it's all based on things that we're not even being taught about. So what happens is, 
is I have been told to do something. And it says, oh, by the way, you're the eighth person I've asked. And I stopped it right there. That's what you got to do with curses. You got to be the one. It, it, see, it defaults because of people, the people's wills and uh, the circumstances. So a whole generation in this process could miss the message that she was given. So every one of you should have a study guide and have gone through it and, 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 and got that as part of your reality. It, 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 checks the, it checks you so that you correct. But if you don't have that, then you continue on the course and it's off. But then you have children and they adopt what you, what you are doing, which is not correct. Okay, so then, then you have another generation that says, well, this is the way my parents did it. See, it transfers, oh, you want to stop that. So a lot of, all of you in this room, I'm telling you by the Spirit of God that things are going to default to you. You're going to be given the talents, so to speak, of others because they did not use them. You're going to find yourself, see, so what we're doing here with Warrior Notes is we're really literally um, creating an atmosphere where you mature so that it can default to you. But it's not, it's not bad that it had to default to you. Like, you know, people will think, well, I wasn't God's first choice. See, you're God's only choice now. Do you get it? Okay, so everything I just told you, the demons know. The demons understand all this. So they try to prevent these things from being transferred and being passed on so that, that it goes a whole generation because if they can get a whole generation to forfeit the inheritance, the next generation, the Antichrist, will be able to come and see, be seated. So he's, he's working on all different angles to get this to happen, Okay. So everybody understand that? Okay, so here's what happens, and here's what I found the remedy is. First John, the book of First John. I guarantee you, if you would start preaching out of 1 John, praying out of 1 John, talking to everyone about 1 John, it would flip this whole thing because 1 John is not preached at all. 1 John is a scary book, just like James is. James is a scary book. And you won't hear it being preached out of because it's, it doesn't bring in the crowds. It doesn't bring in the offerings either. So the cartel will keep it out of the agenda. Do you realize in the court of law that if you withhold information, you don't lie, but you just withhold certain information, do you realize that the court could rule that you're lying because you withheld? It's just as wrong to withhold information as it is to tell something that's not true. Now, so look at that. Your lights are just going on. See, that's how messed up we're getting is that our, our framework of the way we process things is becoming corrupt. So when people say this, it's like, where did this guy come from? It's some new doctrine. It's like I'm preaching. I literally, my notes are whole chapters of the Bible. You, could, you can ask my staff. I have whole chapters of the Bible, and I go through bullet points, and all you see is a whole chapter of Paul and my notes. My notes for this morning are the whole book of 1 John because I talk to you about light and about how distortion and manipulating light, you can block out certain, certain realms, okay? But what if, what 1 John says, what if you did and operated in 1 John, which is not preached? I've never, I can tell you, I have not heard a sermon out of 1 John. I've heard him like sideways, like half-mast, like reference it, you know, real quick, like, you know, like how you are when you come to a name you can't pronounce, you just go, ring, 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 like this. So it's what you call word salad. You hear it every day on Z ZNN, you know, word salad, you know. And 
And, and then, the, you know, the fake news says, well, I don't know what he said, but it was good, you know. <laughs> That's our president, you know. I mean, I'd believe in tongues just off of what I see off of the, off the speeches, you know. <laughs> I mean, that's just evidence of tongues right there. All right. This is, what, for, this is what John wrote in 1 John. And this is how you make all the realms visible to you. We've gazed upon him and we heard him speak. Our hands actually touched him, the one who was from the beginning. The living expression of God. Verse 2, the life giver was made visible. He was made visible. He existed, but he was made visible. You get it? Man, this room's going to turn into a nuclear reactor here in a minute. Oh, I can feel it. Yeah, oh, yeah he's bringing the Bible into it. Yeah. We've seen and we testify to this truth. The eternal life giver lived face to face with the Father. And he has now dawned upon us. That means he's come up as a dawn, risen, been, been revealed. So we proclaim to you, this is important. You have the experience, but now you've got to proclaim it. We proclaim to you that what we have seen and heard about this life giver so that we may share and enjoy this life together. For truly our fellowship is with the Father and with the Son, Jesus, the Anointed One. Okay, we are writing these things to you because we want to release to you our fullness of joy. Okay, so what I see lacking right now in the body is joy, which is a spiritual characteristic of God that isn't isn't determined by your situation at all. It's a spiritual characteristic of the Holy Spirit and of God himself. So it's not, it's, it's not to be turned down or diminished in any way like, like a happiness would be. Happiness is an espresso. Or, or happiness is, is, when, is when, you, you know, when things change in your favor, then it makes you feel good. But then in the next moment, they can raise your rates for your bills, and then it's sucked out like, just like that. That's happened, right, to you? So you get, you get a raise, and then it goes, I mean, in the same, the same uh, postal person who just put it into your box, in the same box is good news and bad news, okay? You get it? Okay, so joy is what they wanted to impart and release it, it says, to you. Fullness of joy is why John was writing these things to the body. So why wouldn't we want to preach this? God is light. He is, he is the life-giving message we heard from him and share. It's still ringing in our ears, it says. We now repeat his words to you. God is pure light. You will never find even a trace of darkness in him. If we claim that we share life with him, now he's talking to believers. He's talking to me and you. He's saying if, if we claim that we share this life with him, but we keep walking in the realm of darkness, we're fooling ourselves and we're not living by the truth. So it has to be visible. It has to become uh, apparent in this physical realm as well. There has to be a manifestation. If not, then you got to own it and take care of the, the one who hinders it. The adversary, the one who withstands God is what it means, the adversary. The, the, that's what it says in Job in Hebrew. It says the adversary came, the one who withstands God and his purpose. And that's what I was told by Jesus in heaven because I, I, I said the name Lucifer or Satan, one of the two, and he said, oh, we don't mention his name up here. He is to be referred to as the adversary. He said, we don't, we don't mention his name. I said, okay, good to know. I won't, I'll, I'll, I won't do that anymore. He's the adversary. He's the one who withstands. Okay. We're fooling ourselves 
and we're not living in truth. But if we keep living in pure light, if we keep living, which is an active, an active uh, act of our will, we have to continue to live in pure light, which is going to cause all the dimensions to start to become visible. But it's not going to be your physical eyes. We keep walking in this realm of darkness. We're fooling ourselves. But if we keep living in the pure light that surrounds him, we share, listen to this, unbroken fellowship with one another. Okay, so the unity, the unity, it's so weird. We say, well, do you believe in tongues? If you don't, I can't fellowship with you. And if you know what, we do it that way, which you're going to have problems if somebody doesn't believe the basics of the Bible. You know, this isn't some advanced course because you get baptized in the Holy Spirit. This is like ground level stuff. (laughs) You can't say we only have unity if you agree with me. Okay, because then it's going to be like a list of doctrine stuff. And that becomes religious. What, what you have to have is pure light where everybody has pure light and you don't, you want to be on the highway of holiness. You want to walk in, in the fear of the Lord and in his obedience. You, wanna, you want um, to, to be confirmed by the body that you're walking in the pure light because if you're walking in the pure light, you know what pure light is and you, you also know what darkness is. And when I was exposed to this at such a high degree, I changed. And I had been a Christian for a a long time. But when I experienced the other realm and I saw the perfection in heaven, I also realized that what Christ did for us was far beyond just securing our eternity. He he had a plan of implementation for each generation. so that every generation was built up enough to where there would not be a default to the next person or to another generation, which is what's been happening. People have come and preached, but they wanted to kill them while they were alive, but now they celebrate them as heroes. But they weren't liked. All your favorites were not liked when they were alive. And that's what Jesus said. I sent you prophets and you killed them but now you celebrate them as your heroes, is what he said to the Pharisees. And he said, you're going to kill me as well. He told them that. And so any one of us that does the will of God in our generation, if we're really doing the will of God in the condition that we're in, you're probably not going to be well liked by everybody. And that, that's the thing that you have to resolve. So go ahead and let it shine. Let the light within you shine out in its purity which the purity would be that you walk on the highway of holiness is talked about, but that Isaiah prophesied in in, in chapter 35. And in one of the translations, I I know you've heard me say this, but one of the translations says that the, the highway of holiness is so holy that even a fool who accidentally finds himself on it will cease to be a fool on the highway. In other words, it's a standard that comes from heaven that influences you it's not based on just necessarily you being religious and saying, well, I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to give or not give. You know, I'm not, I'm gonna, you know in other words, it, the conviction has to be coming from the pure light. It has to be coming from a pure standard that was given to us from heaven, which he's talking about here that he encountered. Everybody follow me? I'm going to go real quick now. So I'm going to encounter unbroken fellowship with you if I walk in pure light and you walk in pure light is what, exactly what he says, okay? So if, if we can get people to stop defaulting and just say yes so it doesn't have to go to the next person, then all that time that you have to have for training to get you to where you need to be, it, it's not wasted to another generation because it has to start over again. Each person has to go through the narrow way. They, they have to go through that process. 
Moses, it took 80 years, 40 years in Pharaoh's court and then 40 years in the desert before he could lead those people out. And the Lord told me that, that I would walk among men days, but years before him, but days before people in comparison. And I was in isolation for, for, for most of my life. And I would pray eight hours a day and not feel a thing. I would not eat for 30 days and nothing would happen. But I just kept doing it. Never got recognized. I had prophecy about being a small ministry, you know. That was after 30 days of, pro of, of fasting. I should have just ate burgers, you know. If that's all I get, that's a, that's a prophecy. You see, what I'm trying to make you laugh, but you can't go by the input of just one realm. And you might do the right thing and nothing happened. Are you okay with that? Because it ain't over yet. <laughs> I'm trusting you guys are getting this. All right. If we boast that we have no sin, oh, wait a minute. Let's go back. It says, but if we keep living in the pure light that surrounds him, we, we share in broken fellowship with one another and, and the blood of Jesus, his son continually, continually cleanses us from all sin. Okay, now let's be honest. This is why this isn't preached at all. Because if you listen to the rhetoric is that, you know, I confess my sins, blood Jesus has cleansed me of my sins. I'm the righteousness of God. I'm holy as he is holy. And uh, the devil can't touch me because he doesn't have any teeth, even though it doesn't say that. And they start saying, well, you know, it's all positional. Like I, you know, and the devil can't touch me. And I'm like, well, what's, what's that thing gnawing at the back of your neck right now? <laughs> I'm serious. This happens all the time. And there are people that are way bigger than me. Well, how's that working? Because you got all kinds of farm animals around you in the spirit. I mean, you got things I've never seen before. I, I, I mean, the Smithsonian be calling you if they could see what's around you right now. They'd be like, you know what? We might need to tag this one. I'm serious. Let's be honest. How many of you would be honest with me this morning and, and, and see what we're saying here? It's saying that we are, if we continually do this, then God will continually cleanse us. The blood of Jesus continually cleanses us. Why does it say continually? Because there is no one that's perfect. That's what he was saying. He's saying there, those who say they're, they're without sin. He's talking to believers. Is this too much? Okay. All right. All right. So this is how, this is how things get corrected in the spirit because these evil spirits are freaking out. They don't want believers to understand this because they're cloaked. They're no longer cloaked now. They've been found out by, by all of you and everyone watching. And then this is growing all over the world. I mean, these messages are being taught and preached everywhere. You know, it's just growing. It's, it's, just, it's just the Bible, but we can't just pick and choose. It's not a la carte. It's a buffet, and you got to eat it all. So Jesus continually cleanses us from our sin as believers, it says. Okay, if we boast that we have no sin, we are fooling ourselves. When have you heard that preached? Okay, so we are strangers to the truth, it says. If we boast that we have no sin, okay, but if we freely admit our sins, when his light uncovers them, see, you got to have the light to uncover them. So this is why it's hard to tell people something that they don't see. Because there has to be more light than there is. And no one wants to stand up this morning on a golf morning, golf day, everybody's out golfing. No one wants to stand up on a Saturday. No, you know, you guys come and you gather together like this and fill the room. But see, how many people want to pay the price to say this? Because this is how, it, it, this is how 
the demons get corrected in your life. This is how, see, it's, it's you are in command. And when the devils know that you're in command, then they will have to listen to you, but they'll be reluctant. They argued with Jesus. When Jesus said to leave, some of them left within the hour. Some of them threw people down and tore them in front of Jesus. Like, how could that happen if they were told to just leave? Why were they allowed to hurt the person on the way out? I'm asking for a friend. Because Jesus even had this when he gave the command. So why are you upset when the devil doesn't listen to you the first time? Why are you upset when people don't get healed the first time you lay hands on them? Jesus laid hands on guys twice. The first time he saw people that looked like trees, well, that wasn't good enough because that's like 2100, you know. Jesus made it 2020. But it took a, a second dose. The son of God, you know. The devils didn't listen to Jesus right away. And how about them negotiating with him? Don't torment us before our time. Don't send us out of the area. You know, and they, I guess they like bacon, so they ask for the pigs, you know. <laughs> but if we freely admit our sins when he, the light uncovers them, then he is faithful to forgive us every time. So this is talking to believers, and it's a continual process. So what, what I, the one thing I also encountered that I knew that was a deficit is that people don't uh, come forth with, to the Lord and get the record straight with him. They, they leave things not, not uh, uh, taken care of with him. And so I found myself, when he appeared to me and my roommate one time, and we both encountered him, he was standing between us, we both started repenting. We were both ministers, prayed in tongues, fasted, and we're gonna be ministers, you know, at, a, at Bible college. And Jesus standing before us, and we were repenting of our sins that we had not confessed as believers. I could not shut my mouth. I could not stop confessing. My spirit, in the presence of Jesus Christ, wanted to get it straight with him because things had piled up between me and him. Like every lie that you tell, you got to confess it. I didn't know that. I thought yeah, I was getting away with it. When something wasn't charged to me and the cashier thought they had charged me, I walked out. I thought, well, the Lord just blessed me. And the Lord says, no, no, you go back. You let them bless you, but you tell them. That's a business. You're stealing. If, and they all the time, they say, I'll just keep it. But I let them make that decision. Do you understand? Oh, this is, this is too much, isn't it? I can just tell. It all. Okay, so these things piled up, but I didn't know it as a Christian. I didn't know until Jesus stood before me and the holiness and the presence of with him was I was repenting of all kinds of stuff that I didn't think was, you know, that big of a deal. You know, I don't know how else to say it, you know. All of a sudden, it was a big deal. The highway of holiness is in my room. And all of a sudden, I don't measure up. Now, I was still going to heaven, but it affected my walk and my effectiveness in this realm. And it caused me not to see in the other realms. I'm just telling you the truth. If you do what I'm telling you this morning, your eyes will clear up. Your spiritual eyes will be able to discern things. And you won't be torqued in your heart. Because your heart knows things that your head doesn't know. And you, you're, you're off course and your spirit knows it. But you, can't, you don't understand why you're torqued. You're, you're, you're just like very frustrated and unsettled. I've told the Lord, I, I've given up. I've given up on people. I've given up on ministry. I mean, in the last couple of weeks, I said, you know what, Lord? I have done everything I can do. I feel like not even half, half the people are getting it. I feel like I, 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 and the Lord says, you're not, I mean, he's called out people's names. People's names that are in this room right now. He says, no, you're not giving up on them. No, you're not giving up on them. You're going to stay in there. You're going to stay in there with them. You're not going to quit. 
you're going to let them let it fly. You're going to let both barrels go now. Right? And so that's what you're, what you're seeing is, is that I'm stepping it up because if I'm feeling this, then I know what you're going through. Okay, so God is just for forgiving our sins because of Christ, and he will continue to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. He'll continue to cleanse us from all unrighteousness, which means that it's possible for him not to. Or he wouldn't say that. See what I mean? The religious gears are seizing up. They're seizing up on you, aren't they? The religious gears that you're structured with, they're seizing up. Because you can process certain things because you've been taught a certain way. The bottom line is, is that in a relationship, you always got to check in. And I, I, and I, I do this with Kathy. Like before I come out, I can't talk. And unless the Lord tells me to talk. So I can't like answer certain questions. I tell Kathy, like we, we talk and we get all these decisions we have to make. It's like 450 of them a day. This person needs to know what to do about this. This person needs to do this. What do I do about this? What do I do about this? But there's a certain point where Kathy knows, like I got to, I got to lock in and I got to be, I got to come in a, a couple notches above what the room is if I'm going to help you. You get it? Okay. But if I'm lowered to, you know, what are we going to have for lunch today? You know, <laughs> which is very important when lunch comes. Right? But if I don't have that mindset, then I come in here and you better be ready to take this service because you can help me if I don't come in above. Do you get it? You didn't come here to hear something you already know. You came here to go where you need to go through someone who has, has a machete and is swinging like a wild man. You need to have like a path clear for it, right? That's why you come. That's what the five folds for is to clear the path. You're supposed to eat and drink, but I'm supposed to get you there. That's it. I can't make you eat. I can't make you drink. I can't make you do these things, but I can, I can show you the path and I can get you there. The, but this is the same way I noticed when I'm flying. I was just talking to Chris. So he's taking off right now. With, he's taking his fighter jet back home. And he, could, he has to go somewhere else, so he can't stay. So, I, he's the same way as me. And I, we, when we sit and we talk, we only got one engine in that airplane. It's not like my other airplanes where you have one en- two engines. You can shut one down. The thing flies just as well. But when you only have one engine, that's it. And so it takes an hour. It takes an hour before we fly. Every time we fly is because that plane goes really fast, upside down, sideways. But it does... Uh, nothing if it doesn't have an engine running and you don't have an option. So all of our conversation is, okay, if this happens, this is what we're going to do. If this happens, this is what we're going to do. We look at satellite imagery of this whole area. We pick out where we're going to land. If we lose an engine, we already determine that. We, pick, we already know the farmer's field is about to get a fighter jet. <laughs> we, we say, okay, if this happens, this happens. If, if it fogs in here, we ha- we're going here. We know how much fuel we need for that, so we're not going to play around too much because if that happens, then we got to have enough to get to the next place. This is all talked about for an hour. Okay, so with Chris, and I don't, I don't talk about what we're going to have for lunch, and he doesn't either. We're like, we got to be able to either bail out of the airplane or ride it out. we got to be able to preserve life, not only our own, but everything else. These conversations go on for an hour. You can imagine, I'm just telling you three minutes. It just goes on and on and on. If this system fails, we're going to do this. It's every single time. And it's the same thing with, with, with Warrior Jet. I have conversations in brief the whole flight. I'm going to have that conversation with, 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 with whatever pilot I'm flying with, which I know is, is Carol. So we're going to talk. We've already talked. I go, well, we're going to stop here for fuel, and we're going to go here, here, and here. And we already know when we're going to arrive how much fuel we're going to have on board. It's already computed. 
and it isn't even tomorrow yet. Okay, so if we do that for that, then why is it that Christians aren't able to somehow operate in a more preemptive way to make it more predictable by the Spirit? Doesn't the Spirit know the future? Okay, doesn't he know if you're going to opt out or if you're going to stay in there too as well? Okay, so if you're going to opt out, I can change history. I can actually change. I can mess with it in this service. If you're going to opt out and you're not supposed to, the Lord wants to use ministers or, or any of us, not, not just, you know, the big boys. He wants to use anybody to be rerouted into someone's life and to speak by the Spirit and change the routing and actually the outcome of a person's day. So that happened a couple, a couple months ago. I was just to have that, that, that fighter jet delivered and I was gonna fly, I was gonna fly to an airport I was going to just fly by myself and just do the demo for the kids, and then someone's going to come pick it up. And the owner, which was Chris, he, he said, well, do you, you know, I, I'm just dropping it off, and, but if you want me to fly with you, I will. And I'm like, well, yeah, I can learn something from an F-18 pilot that <laughs> you know, flies off of ships, you know. has been doing this a lot longer than I have, of course. So he flew with me. So when we went through the checklist, we went through the briefing an hour, and then we're going to fly it to the next city, which was the one where we were going to have the spirit school, just like now. And um, he said, you know what? We're going to keep an eye on this. It's just a couple drops, but uh, we're going to keep an eye on this. I said, okay. So as I'm taxiing out, I'm, I'm talking to the tower. I'm telling them, you know, we want to use this runway because it's longer. We felt like we should choose a longer runway, even though, you know, it was okay. But we just, I'm, like I said, I'm the one that's going to fly with someone else rather than fly by myself. I'm the one that's going to put more fuel on. I'm that one that's just not going to, I'm not doing this t- to see, to prove anything. So I asked for a longer runway. We both felt that way. We're both Christians. It was really hot and the air is thin and we're fully loaded with fuel. So as I'm taxiing out, doing my checklist, a warning light comes on in the hydraulics. So I pushed to reset it, told him it came on again. Well, if it comes on again, we got a big problem. I look out the window, and there is a path of hydraulic fluid on the taxiway. If we would have taken off on the runway they gave us, we would have already been in the air. But because I took the longer one, it got down low enough to where the warning light came on. Instead of on takeoff with all that PSI, it's 3,000 pounds per square inch in that system. That thing is coming out if there's a hole. It's gonna come out really fast. And when you lose your hydraulics in an airplane, it doesn't wanna do what you want it to do anymore. And we were gonna be in an emergency really quick. So Chris says, uh, no, we gotta go back. So it ends up being grounded, completely grounded. We didn't even fly it that weekend. So what if I would have been by myself? What if I hadn't asked the right questions, which I trained to do? But what, what helped me was I was with another believer who goes from zero to 150 in the length of a football field off a ship and then goes from 150 to zero in the length of a football field off a ship. It's, you have someone like that behind you, assisting you, but really he's the man. But he made me a captain. Do you get it? This is why we need each other. And this is why Jesus came and exposed all this to John and all the disciples is what John's talking about here. And that light they encountered, but it was an explosive light that caused them to see. And then from Revelation, what I just read to you, John had that revelation of 
the body of Christ and the blood of Jesus and the, the ability to discern our position, which means we have to be active. If I hadn't done something about that, if I hadn't asked him to stay, you know, I would have been looking for the number to call for the mechanic. He, he knew the mechanic. He just made a call. Same with Sven. All these guys, they make one call. It would have taken me an hour to figure it out. So why would you want to do it by yourself? Do you get it? Okay, so Jesus did this for us. Now the disciples became apostles. Then they imparted that. The, the early church, the way that people operated in the early church was it was common for them to have revelations, to have visions and dreams, to have angels. You don't see them, you don't see in the book of Acts that the devil spoke to Paul and appeared to him and took him to hell or that the devil said this to Peter and he had a bad day. So he took a week off. You don't see these things about like the demons doing this and that. Do you notice that? They don't talk a lot about the interaction with demons, but you know that was happening. But what was happening was the light was so strong in the church that people dropped dead if they lied to the Holy Spirit. And you know people that have done worse than that, and they're still alive. Yes. Right? Okay. So what is the challenge here is not waiting for a leader to appear so that you can follow them. Yeah. That has happened. But they're, they're, the Lord's telling me there's a handoff coming. So you're going to see my staff come up here and pray with me for you. Then you're going to see all the students come up and pray for you. And then you're all going to be students, and then you're going to pray for each other because there's going to be nobody else. It's just going to be students and staff, you know, because that's discipleship, right? So what, at, there's going to have to be a flip. This is what I wanted to tell you, and i got to go on to the next subject, is there has to you have to know there's hash marks in your timeline where you become the minister that everyone wants to have prayer from. You're the one that they come to when they need help. You have to see yourself as flipping to where you're the answer. You're no longer a victim. Right? And you have to, you, even if it's foreign to you right now, you have to see yourself this way. Okay? All right, here we go. Next on the agenda. Okay, so there has to be a proper perspective. Okay, so let's, let's, put, you all, let's put you all in this. Would you, like, like Paul, Paul didn't, didn't want to be married, okay? He was very vocal about it. He's like, why would you want that? He says, because then that other person, you're going they're, they're gonna, to gonna share them. They're, they're going to, I don't even want to say it, but it's scripture. But the bottom line is, is that why would you want that trouble of having to share your attention with someone else when you just want to have God as your attention, you know? Now, he says that, but you can't tell a teenager that. <laughs> and even at 30, you can't tell somebody that. I'll, I, I know that the proper perspective is not always apparent. It's not always real to people. I know that I'm embarrassed, even after going to heaven and being sent back, I'm embarrassed that it took me so long to process what happened to me. I, I had culture shock. And so it took, it took not months, it took years for me to even act on what I learned up there. And um, I was in shock. Um, I knew, I knew 
what was going on around me. I knew what the enemy had in store for me. I knew that it was a huge risk to even trust people because this is what the Lord showed me. And my staff knows that I don't go there, go where I'm going right now. But I'm telling you something. Is this, this is what I told my staff. I said, the Lord told me, he said, Kevin, when it comes down to it, everyone has a choking point and eventually everyone will sell you out. At some point, everyone has a price. He said, it happened to me. The Jesus told me that his disciples had a choking point where they, had, they bailed because they didn't understand what was going on. And so at certain points, he was left to himself. You see, all of us, we think, like, especially my staff, we would think, like, if I was going to go to jail, they would say, well, put me in jail too as well. But the bottom line is, is that when it comes to that, will you do that? Okay, so the disciples, they were like, we're going to go and die with you. You know, they said all this stuff. I mean, you, you know all the quotes of everybody that said it. But how many people were down there taking the stripes on the back with him? And you, you get it, right? I'm just being honest with you. Jesus said, everyone has a selling out point where they can't go on with you anymore. Yes, that's it. I'm, I, I don't know if I've ever shared this publicly. But I'm telling you that at a certain point, the, the, the most prized thing that you can do for somebody is die for somebody else. The, the, the best thing, that, that, that's what Jesus said, would be the biggest thing is, is to, die, to die for a friend to actually die for someone else. And I saw that the key to what I'm walking in is based on that knowledge, is knowing where, how far people can go and being okay with that. Okay, so I say that because the only way I can help you is to get you out of cycles of rejection. I got to get you out of rejection because that's what you're bound with. But you don't accept that. You don't know that possibly. But honestly, if I gave you sodium pentothal and a bright light in your face, you would confess it to me. But honestly, all of us deal with this because Adam and Eve, as soon as they departed outside of the garden, they, were, they had the worst case of this because they had everything and now they get sick. They have to work. They, they are disconnected, and they don't have all the benefits. So it's like when I, when I uh, retired from Southwest Airlines, I heard from God because I prayed from day one. I mean, I remember my first leg was from Dallas, Love Field, to Little Rock, Arkansas. It was my first flight as a flight attendant. And I quit my job on that flight. I couldn't wait to get back to tell them, forget it. And I quit almost every day for 30 years. And then I saw what God had done. He, he told me it would take many, many years to get you to the place where you could walk in what I've called you to walk in if I didn't put you in situations that was like a, a cooking, pressure cooker. So, if I sent you this job, then are people really mistreating you? Are you really, ultimately, are you doing the math and saying, well, if people are being this way toward me, then this is the way I am? Or are you just submitting to the grindstone and not letting the Lord knock off the rough edges to where these things don't bother you anymore? Okay, so I'm telling you this, and I want you to listen closely. If someone, if someone goes into my house uninvited, they're going to become holy. <laughs> there will not be a conversation at all. Why? Because that person made a decision to cross a boundary. There is no conversation. 
Does everybody hear what I'm saying? Or, or do you not say? Is that if you're going to do something to my wife, I will die protecting her. I don't want to live without her. So I would rather die and her live. Okay? So when it comes to Christianity and God, you'll pay $85 to go to a seminar on how to cast out demons. But will you deny yourself and, and what you believe for, are you willing to die for it? In other words, if a devil says they're not coming out, do you say, okay. <laughs> How many of you have had something in your body? I've had it happen. I have like prayed and cursed something was growing on my body that, that, I, it, that I was told isn't good. You know, they said a certain word, you know. So I cursed it, and it went away, and it appeared on the other side of my body. <laughs> okay, so how do you explain that? Okay, so really, when you're through your tests of rejection, you get to the, 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 the way you know it is you don't take no for an answer anymore. You have the attitude that you're not going to be denied. And so you revert. If something's not happening, you just say, I know you're working on this, Lord. I know you're working on this. Thank, thank God. Thank God this is, this is going to come to a closure. God is, God, God, I thank you. It's going to be really good. We're going to have a celebration. You're going to get all the glory for it. And you talk like this. And you learn to mature and not be rejected. Now, think about this. I'm just, I'm hearing from the Lord. Everything I'm saying, it's just, it just seems random. It's just the way it is. It's, it's, it's a prophetic. So, I refer to waking up and seeing a creature on my chest. It was in Phoenix, Arizona. This thing was so ugly. This thing was so vulgar and ugly and vicious that I could not believe that someone would allow this around them. But it was a spirit of lust. It was literally a spirit of lust. It was the most vulgar, hideous creature I've ever seen. And it reminded me on, it looked like, the, it wasn't, but it looked like the creature on Predator, the, the alien creature, with the teeth and it's slobbering and everything. That, I'm like, how did those people actually replicate something that's actually real in the I'm telling you this because no, no other minister is going to talk about this. It's like this thing, this thing was assigned to gain entrance. It was on my chest when I woke up. And this is what I said to it. It's like right here. I go, you got to be kidding me. That's what I said to it. You got to be kidding me. Get, get out of here. And the thing just like, it was... It, it, it didn't even sense that I was afraid or that I was interested or anything. And so it fled in terror because I submitted to God and I resisted him. But resist, the word resist means to push away like you'd push away a police officer in a resisting arrest. Yeah. It was that pushing away, okay? So nobody's going to talk about this stuff. I have, I have told you that you're going to be told, you're never going to mount to anything. You're going to be told all these things. I know this. I know that you have been told things by people that prophesied over you that are not true and that they're never going to happen. You see, you've been told you're going to have a worldwide ministry. And I've never been told that. Why are there so many people walking around that have words from these prophets that you're going to have a worldwide ministry? What does that mean? What does that mean? They have, you have prophecies, I, I saw you on a jet. Well, so that's like a status that you've made it as a minister? You're on a jet? 
I've, I've been prophesied. I've not been prophesied about a big ministry, but I've been prophesied that I'm going to have a Mercedes. Like, I don't want a Mercedes. I drive two miles a week. I fly tens of thousands of miles in a month, but I don't drive more than two miles because it's so dangerous. I'm serious. Nothing happens while I'm flying, but it happens, it happens as soon as I get in a car. Okay, so why is it that people are saying things that are actually cultural? They're not by the Spirit. You, you want to know what the Spirit is really telling me? Glad you asked. What he's telling me is I'm bringing the nations to you. You're not going to have to go. That's what he's telling me, that he's bringing the people here. What? You're worried about the wall. But they just saved me a bunch of fuel. You are, are you thinking this through? You, you guys are thinking. What is the Spirit saying right now? He, these things that they're saying are success are going away. Can you handle picking up manna every day and that's it? No whole foods. We call it whole paycheck. I mean, that's what the employees call it. They literally work there and spend their whole paycheck on food there. They just work there as a side job just to get the, the discount. They call it whole paycheck. They literally just allow their, their money to be in an account and they just drain it by a shopping bag. Okay, so what if you had to get water from a rock and you had to go out and say manna, which in Hebrew means what is it? Okay, so you will go out and go, where is the what is it? And you pick it up and you eat it and you do that every day. What, what, are, you, what, what are you judging the supernatural as? Is it a Mercedes, a worldwide ministry? Or is it, what is it and where is it? And where, where's my water coming from the next day? Do you catch what I'm saying? What is prosperity? I mean, I, I realize now that the culture determines that prosperity is a certain thing, but I also remember, I mean, let's all admit it, that the church has kind of adopted these, these terms and vocabulary, and then you really aren't looking for the supernatural anymore. You're, you're wanting to play the slot machine, the God, the God slot machine, or the ATM. You put in and you get out. I feel like I'm all alone sometimes when I say this. But see, I don't consider myself a minister. I'm just Captain Kevin, you know. I was a flight attendant Kevin, you know. And God made me a captain. But he can make you anything he wants, but it's not going to follow the rules. You might come and speak by the Spirit, by the power of God, and not with enticing words. You might be sent to somebody that you don't like. You might have to rely on the Spirit to do the work of the ministry. So rejection, the cycles of rejection is what keeps you out of the supernatural because you're never good enough. And you stay in this cycle. Okay, so for instance, right now, like right now, is there anybody in here as I'm walking that you see the angel behind me? Because there's an angel behind me right now. There's an angel behind me. He follows me everywhere I go. Now, I have felt him. He comes. Sometimes he doesn't come. Sometimes he comes. Uh, I mean, I still preach anyway. But my back is hot. I thought Mrs. Potato Head was hot. <laughs> but my back is burning. It has been for the last half hour. Okay, that Holy Spirit that's inside of you is hotter than the angel, but the angel comes and 
the angel is wanting to help me to minister for, minister for you, for those who are going to inherit salvation. They've come to minister for those who are going to inherit salvation, as the scripture says. But they also can put you up a couple different notches in, in ministry. Okay, so right now, I don't have any feelings of rejection. I don't feel a devil. And actually, I like everybody. Right now, I like everybody. I do. I like... I don't have any doubt, any fear. But you know what? If that angel leaves, I'm going to feel that void. Okay? If the Holy Spirit isn't allowed to produce this bright, pure light that we talked about inside of me that comes out, if, if, he, if he is not allowed to operate or to manifest in a certain way, then I'm going to feel that void. Okay? So this is where you have to get comfortable with the fact that you ain't all of that and that that's okay. But it says to stay in there with him constantly. It says to constantly be allowing that light to flood you so that you are always more than what you just need, but it's for others, okay? So that, that happens in every area of your life. So you'll find yourself, this happens to me, and we, we had healings last night, just so I prayed. And people were healed all over the world. It's because it goes to Europe first. So we had 10,000 people that were viewed it. By the time I got to my hotel room, it was almost at 10,000. But this morning, it's, it was almost 20. It was 15 something. But that's all foreign. Now everyone that didn't watch is going to watch it. So by, by tonight, it'll be close to 20, 25,000 people. Okay, people are getting healed, but it already happened. The prayer happened. Okay, but people are saying that I got healed. When you said this, when you said this, it's every night, every time that I speak. Okay, it's going forth and people are being healed. Things are being corrected. But if I didn't allow the Lord to keep me in there at this, at this, the pure light level, then those things would diminish because it's not me. So I'm going to say some hard things because I still got eight minutes left. I'm going to say some hard things and I'm going to go pay attention to them because I feel like I've neglected them. But you guys are really cool. You're first. You're first. I've... I used to have to, I used to have, when I was just by myself and Kathy, I used to have to sing and play the piano in order to have any inkling of God come on my life. So I could pray in the spirit. I just, I'm telling you the truth because no one will tell you this. I spent like 20 years in obscurity, praying and fasting, Kathy and I wearing the carpets out in our houses. And if I I would go to a service. If I didn't have the right music, if I didn't have, I would have to do it myself. There were times where it wasn't good enough, and then I would have to do it, like what we're doing here. And the Gillettes are amazing, and, and Caesar and Mike, they're all awesome. But it started out with, we're going to do whatever the Lord's bringing forth. Okay, it's that idea of a minstrel, which means that the prophets in the Old Testament, they had the spirit upon them. They didn't have the spirit within them. It was the spirit upon. Now we have the spirit within. Okay, but on, in the Old Testament, at different times, there were people that were like very vile. And so the prophet would call for a minstrel because they couldn't even operate in their gift because of the sons of Belial and different people, vile kings. Okay, so bring me a minstrel. Then that would unlock within them so that they could prophesy and, and hear from God for that situation. That's Old Testament prophets. In the New Testament, we can operate in the gifting, which wouldn't even be the anointing. I'm sorry. But the gifting is from the Holy Spirit. God sets in a church, and he gives, the Spirit gives certain um, gifts to each person as the Spirit wills. Okay, so we each have certain gifts as God determined, and then the fivefold is set in the church. So that's why Paul was arrested, because it says that he was appointed as an apostle since birth. 
but he killed Christians for half his life. But it's because he was appointed as an apostle since birth, the gifts and callings of God are without repentance. And that always goes over well, but I'm going there because nobody wants to hear this. But the fivefold, they are appointed and set. So it got to the place where Paul got hijacked. And the Lord says, why do you keep pushing against me? Why do you persecute me? He called him Lord. He said, when have I, Lord, when have I persecuted you? He called him Lord. His spirit knew. This is a mystery. So I found that I went from gifting, which I could operate in, if the spirit wills, if the spirit's manifesting, I can do it. If the anointing comes on me, which is kind of a mystery, you think you have control of it. You think you can do certain things like drink espresso or things like that. But, you know, you think you can, you can jimmy with it a little bit. Okay, but what I found was when the anointing comes upon you, it's to break yokes and it's, it's the spirit's uh, own will that supersedes your will. But that doesn't go over very well. So the gifting is in you or it's not. So if you don't have the gift of faith, you're just going to operate in your faith that you have based on your relationship with God and the word of God, okay? But the gift of faith will take you to where you can't doubt and people will be, be healed and you won't even believe it because it's a gift of faith. You, you won't doubt, but you didn't do it on your own. You couldn't get that mustard seed to grow that much. Okay, you get me? Okay, then that's, that's where we ended with the Word of Faith movement and all the charismatic movements and everything we've had so far, the healing movements, it's all been giftings and anointings. Okay, but what God is asking for now is, is to bring people into unity so that we can operate in the presence and then in habitation, which is the glory. But see, people that aren't right will drop dead in the glory. See, no one's going to talk about this. Okay, so this is what happened with me, and I'm just telling you, is I know that most people, they can't, they can't seem to walk this way with me about this. But, but I'm believing for you to understand that a lot of the things that we've adopted are Old Testament. And we wanted to be Elijah. And we got prophets walking around thinking that they, they're Elijah and Enoch and all this stuff. And I'm like, not, not what I want. Because I met Jesus and I want his mantle. You know, because he's all that and more. And he can just look at you and you're like, you know what? I agree. I don't know what you just did, but I agree. I mean, he's given me looks where it's been 40, 40 volume set. Yeah. I'm like, you know what? We're not going there. We're fine, Lord. Whatever you say. He hasn't said a word. He just gave you the look. I mean, he's done that to me. Okay, this is what I found. Is when I went into the presence, it was because I stepped into what was already there. But I had to get everyone into that. And it didn't need a minstrel. Okay, so what I found was I could walk in and just walk right up to the pulpit and do what I'm doing like I just did. Okay, I'm telling you, it's not been that long ago that I couldn't do that. I had to have somebody play. I don't care if it's spoons or, or an accordion. I'm serious. I had to have it. Okay, that's where I was. But when I started walking in a presence, when I, when I encountered him and I started to, to build a school and do all that I'm doing, everyone started to walk in the presence and you can feel it, you know. But then if you feel like what's about to happen in here, because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to extend it out a little longer here, and um, what happened last night, it went from presence to glory. And when it went into the glory, there was no demons there was, there was no doubt or, la or lack in here. And people started getting healed, and you can see it online. And I know that some of the, of the people that are here actually put comments 
that they, that they were touched and healed in the service last night. But I know when it happened. It went when we went to that place where we went into the glory and the pre, the, it, was, it was together in unity. Okay, so when the angel comes in, that is another aspect that's not being taught. See, the angels that come to me are for you. They're not for me. They, they never say a word to me. I, I can tell you the name of my angel. He's been, I mean, Kathy, do you remember in that apartment in Seattle with the pastor's mother and, the, and that angel came in and introduced himself and, and I gave me his name. And she was there and so was the pastor's mother. The whole place lit up in, into a bright, a bright light you could hardly see. And I was introduced. He has never said another word to me. And when was that? When would that have been? How many years? Like, well, it's more than... 13, 13 years ago, or 10? So 13 years ago. He's, he's behind me now, never said a word since then. So there's the gifting, there's the anointing, then there's the presence, and then there's the glory. At, at these different stages, it becomes more about him than it does you or anything that's in you because it becomes corporate. Okay, but the thing that's not talked about is that the angels, when they come, that is another thing that happens that, that produces ministry. Because I'm, I'm taken to a place where I, I, I'm, I, I don't normally walk in right now. In fact, honestly, if we all just appeared in heaven and we go, wow, that was wild, we were raptured. I would believe it right now. And I, that's how I feel right now. I feel like all of a sudden we're all in heaven. We're all laughing. It's like, you got to be kidding me, man. You didn't even finish your coffee talk. You know, but that's how I feel. Oh, I'm supposed to be over here. I'm supposed to be over here. So nobody wants to talk about the fact that angels are here to assist us and with us all the time. But what happens is, did you notice that People, the, the naysayers, don't, they, they don't come at you if you talk about the demons bothering you. But you start mentioning you have like an angel helping you. Or some of the things that have happened to me that I still can't explain. And I, I talk about it. I write about it. It changed my life. But everybody has a problem with that. But nobody has a problem with demon vegetation. Okay? Or vegetation, you know. <laughs> so... Why is it that we don't progress to where it was in the early church? Where the glory was there. Where people's shadows healed people. You know, it's like Peter... You know, I'm sure they were afraid of him. I mean, because people would die if they lied, right? They're at the feet of Peter, right? Remember in church, the church service? Okay. Well, he's like, that's nothing. Wait till you see my shadow. Because it, didn't his shadow, when it would touch people, he would be healed? Okay, this is the guy that had the foot in the mouth disease where he said things all the time. He was like totally working against Jesus at times. What turned him around to where he was operating in all this supernatural? So your focus can't be on the things that are visible. And you can't take every opportunity that presents itself, even if it's a good opportunity. You have to present it to the Lord in prayer. But, but Kathy's been with me an encounter when Jesus has walked into the room. I have roommates in college that saw Jesus walk into the room and talk to me. She's been there with that angel. But why is it that they hasn't, hasn't said anything to me since, but he's always with me? And I get into hard situations where I don't know what to do or say. But I always find a pathway that's well lit Amen. I hope this has helped you.
Okay. So if, if, you, if you, you know you have angels with you and you know that God has written a book about you, so if you are established with all of these things that are written and things that have been given to you, then you shouldn't allow circumstances and hardship to dictate how it's going to turn out if it's already rigged, if it's already written and God has seen value in you and he's already invested in you before you could mess up is what I'm trying to say. Do you get it? So you're worried about messing up, but why, you don't have to mess up. Stop focusing on the ground because you might fly into it. Start looking where you're going. Man, <sighs> do you remember that time that we saw, I saw the second coming of Jesus? The, the Lord, the Lord uh, I, was, I was asleep in Phoenix. In, no, it wasn't Phoenix. New Orleans. I had a, I mean, I'm sleeping and the whole roof opened up and I saw the King of glory, the Lord coming with all his angels and all the saints. I mean, I could describe the, the crown he had on. There was light beams coming out of his eyes and his face. Like he was fierce looking and he had a sword and he was on a horse and all these these beings were around him and then, and then saints. And then um, he had this crown that was huge crown with all these jewels. It was like almost overdone, but it can't because he's the king. But it was like, oh, it was like big. And I'm like, how does this 50 pounds, you know, how's he, how's he stay on the horse, you know? No, I'm just kidding. So I look up and I see these beams coming out of his eyes and they're hitting me. And I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm actually awake, but I'm not awake. You know, one of those things. Okay. So one hit me right here and I just screamed out in worship to him and when I did my wife one of the beams I saw it hit her and when 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 it hit her she screamed out the same worship to the Lord that I was saying but she's asleep too We have the same dreams. We wake up, we have the same exact dreams. We describe, if there's a demon after us, we can describe it exactly. We can go in the house and show you exactly where it was. We saw it in the corner of, of the room. Uh, how's that possible? Okay? Okay. So what about all of us, if we all agree right now, is that we take ourselves to the end where we're all in heaven and we've accomplished it all and now there's a thousand year reign and we're all receiving our rewards and then we're getting reassigned because that's what happened immediately. You'll look down and you'll literally have your uniform on for your next assignment for the next thousand years. You literally will have it on and you'll have all your rank that you achieve down here and that's where you start. So you'll be assigned territories. And um, if you believe in a, a round earth, then it'll be around the globe somewhere. But if it's flat, it'll be, you know, somewhere at the edge. But I'm just kidding. So you have, you have all these, I had all these patches on and it was territories. And um, I was assigned to that. And, and so immediately... When we are all there, you will receive an audit and it will be an overlay of what was written about you. It'll be this transparency that's laid over what you did. It'll just be a transparency and the Lord will actually stare at you and smile the whole time. You're not going to be at like some throne shaking, you know, like bowing down and shaking and hoping that you at least pass with a 70%, you know. <laughs> it, it's, like, it's like he stares at you right in your eyes and Everything that you were given to do, like as far as what your abilities were and what you did with them, it's overlaid with what you did. So this transparency comes over you and it's, it, recti it, it rectifies, not rectifies, it's, it's like it justifies. You know, in other words, it's an audit. So the transparency is you can look down and Jesus just staring at you, smiling while he's doing it because you don't go to the judgment seat like, like uh, the world does. You, you receive rewards for what you did with what you had. 
So if you made it to heaven, I mean, that's just like the bottom level. Your, lamb, your name's written in the Lamb's Book of Life. I mean, that's, that's, that's the epitome. But after that, the overlay. So immediately you get a score based on it's matched up with what was written about you. And it was your responsibility. You're about to blame the Lord, and then you can't. I'm serious. Your, your first thing is like, yeah, but this happened to me. And my mom made faces at me when I was a baby, you know, and... <laughs> And um, I, they fed me macaroni and cheese, and I, my learning curve was really bad. You know, you start blaming, and, and it, you're, it, it just goes like, and you want to blame, like, well, I did believe, Lord, and it didn't happen. You want to, that's what happens. Immediately, you're shocked. And this is what he says, well done. Enter in. And, then, and then when he says that, though, you're thinking, man, what did I do? I mean, I... You're, you're thinking, I could quote every Seinfeld episode. <laughs> and you can drum like animal on Sesame Street, you know. <laughs> Even chained. But what did you do with what he gave you? And that's what happens. Okay, so... If we all agree right now, this is all going to happen. And then after he says, well done, you'll look down and you'll be completely clothed with your next assignment. And it's based on what you did down here. And you start right there because your character, your personality goes with you, except what isn't redeemed. It, thank God it doesn't go with you. So I still knew who I was, but I wasn't the same person. And that's why when I came back, I had to deal with all this, this. Because I knew what was really going on around me, which is what we've been talking about for two hours. But the Lord said, now go back and teach people this. Okay, so we're all together now in heaven, and this is what we're going to pray. Every one of you has to realize that this is going to happen to you and that from this day forth, every decision you make has to be toward what you now know. And that is, is that what we saw was that Jesus will return. He will return like he said, and there will be an audit. But it's based on decisions that you've made, not just daily, but hourly. And that it is literally, I'm telling you, it is literally a free-for-all. I'm just telling you. No one else will tell you this, but when I was in heaven, I saw that it was a free-for-all down here. That there were so many books that needed to be written that you're just really not going to get to the end of it. And no one else is really going to do it, so you just do it. So there's going to be people that need ministered to that others were supposed to do it. But if you just go ahead and do it, you will never run out but it will be because you decided, I'm going to rake it in. I'm going to be the one that made somebody's day, made their year, made their life. I'm going to say something from the Spirit that's going to change their course and change history. It will literally, in some instances, it will change a whole country. It's already doing it based on, based on doing what you're called to do. So let's all agree right now. We all will be there together. We will all make it. Okay. However, what happens in the audit is really up to you. I'm just telling you. Now, I'm going to get all kinds of, 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 of people disagreeing because they think that you're either going to hell or heaven and you have no choice. And those are clouds without rain. The reward system is based on you diligently seeking God. It says that is that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So you believe in God, but you have to believe that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So believing in God gets you to heaven, but the reward system is based on diligently seeking out what it is that you're supposed to do. What did I say at the beginning of this? Not every opportunity is God.
So let's agree, because what you fill in this room, as good, as good as all the things that we can do in a church service to bring it to this point, whatever that point is, it's not, it's not that we stop doing these things. It's just that what if we get into the glory right away and people start getting healed? What if you don't take an offering and one person makes up for it the next week, which is what happens every single week? What if you decide to give instead of like try to pay off your house like we did and somebody else pays off your house? In other words, what if you just be obedient to what God's telling you to do with your life, knowing that it's a free-for-all? I saw books on, in the shelves of heaven that have to be written down here. It's information that has to be given to the body of Christ. It, it doesn't matter who it comes through. <laughs> it just has to come. There's songs that have to come. Thank God Brittany yields to the Spirit. But you know what? All of us can do this if we yield. But those songs, they're not her songs. They were, they were up in heaven that have to be spoken in this realm. And, and Jason has to play on his guitar these certain things to unlock. It's like combinations that need unlocked. And, and, and Caesar has to do the bass line a certain way, and, and Mike has to set the beat and the rhythm, and he has to be able to change it up, and we all have to be able to change it up. And like last night, I mean, I told Jason, I said, Jason, if you can get, if, did you see what happened? I whispered to Jason, can you tell Brittany, here's the words for the next song. The Lord just gave them to me. But it took a couple minutes because she can't just like go from uh, the fire of God to being God walking in the walk. I can hear the sound of God walking in, you know. So she, she's waiting on the Lord and she knows that I'm not like, hey, come on, you know. <laughs> but the Lord said, this is where we're going. We're going to end it with this. I'm walking. Can you hear me walking? I'm walking. Can you hear the footsteps of God? That's how we ended. I go, okay. I looked over at Ryan. I go, two more minutes. He said, are you counting? Two more minutes. He came up. I'm not manipulating and controlling. It's a, I'm a maestro. So are you being controlled by your church? Are you being controlled by the fivefold? I'm asking for a friend. His name's Jesus. Are you being controlled by ministers? Because that's not God. I feel really brave. Okay, so let's agree. Let's agree. Do you want to stand? Like, t like taking a stand. You know, you've sat. Okay, let's take it. Let's, let's, let's really, really lock in here. Okay, so when I pray, I'm standing in eternity with you, and we've already accomplished everything. So our faith, our faith is that we make it, we all are together. So let's ask the Lord to work backwards now to where we're at right now. If we make it, and we're all together, we're all happy we don't have to worry about the next president or what's in our food. And, and we're all happy. We, we all did it, you know. We held. But we're there, okay. We're looking at each other. Okay, so you have the audit. So how'd you do? You know, we're talking, you know, like, well, well I, I did like 40%. I did 35%. Actually, mine was 35% of what I could have done. Okay, so maybe yours is better now. But you say, oh, yeah, I did 65%. But man, I saw where God was sending me people every day and I blew through it. I didn't discern that God was giving me another opportunity. Um, he was giving me an idea for a business, but I, was, I chickened out. And then you saw that the $5 you had in your pocket was all you needed. 
That's the stuff that happens. Okay, so think about this. Let's all agree now that we not only make it, we've got eternal life, but now it's a free for all. And let's ask the Lord to give us a new number. What's your number? Well, it's gonna be bigger now. Do you all follow me? Is everybody, raise your hands if you like follow me. Okay, so you all agree that the Lord can do this miracle corporately and the angels are here to witness us is that we're gonna become so productive that it's supernatural. Okay, you ready? All right, so Father, in the name of Jesus, we all agree it's touching this one thing as the body who you are the head, Jesus, we agree that not only do we reach the eternity with you, but that you take us now back to where we're at right now and make it so that it is better, that the end result is better because we now know the answers to the questions for the test. Father, that we receive the wisdom from God to realize the opportunities that are around us that we're supposed to take advantage of. So by the Spirit of God, by the angels of God, by the presence of God, and by the glory of God. And Lord, that we're not resting just on your anointing and on our gifts, but that we're resting on your glorious grace, that your glorious presence, Lord, is going to cause us to go beyond, and that the angels are coming beside us to click us up several notches so that we can accomplish the great harvest, everything that you have for the people of the earth today, that this generation, that we will be faithful. Lord, we seal it up now. We all agree. And, there's, and, and as soon as I said we all agree and you all agree with us, I saw that many of you are not supposed to be sick, but you're sick. So that needs to change. So that's one correction that needs to happen in this room. So let's all believe that everyone here will receive healing that needs healing right now. I break the power of sickness and disease in Jesus' name, and I pronounce you well by the name and the blood of Jesus Christ. I command every hindering spirit, every lying devil, every influencer by the evil one to, to desist in your maneuvers against the body of Christ right now. I break every demonic power, every evil spirit. You know you must go right now. You must go in Jesus' name by the blood of Jesus. And now, Lord, baptize us with fire. <laughs> baptize us in the holy cleansing fire. Oh, my God. I know. Come on now, release it. Come on, just release it. Be vocal. Release it. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Be released from your trauma in Jesus' name. Every demonic force coming against this place is gone in Jesus' name. The angels are singing, holy, holy, holy. That's what they're singing right now. The angels are among us singing, holy, holy, holy. Are you Lord God Almighty? They're saying there's no one like you. You are the most high. The angels are asking, where are your enemies? Oh God, there are none. There are people in here that are believing for new clothes. I mean, you're believing for clothes. The Lord is going to give it to you. You're believing that your bills are going to be paid. The Lord is working it out right now. Just trust him right now. Oh. Oh, oh Pastor Mike, come up here. Where's the... 
Oh, man. Oh. Mr. Jan, too, come up here. Pastor Mike, talk about that, how the Lord provided for you even called. He's, he's preemptively planning these events that will show you that he already knows. He just needs your heart. He just wants, he just longs for you. The Lord grieves, he's longing for you. He misses you. He misses those intimate times when you were, were He's saying, remember before you were married, where I was, I was the only one you had. That's what the Lord's saying. He said, remember when you were alone and I was with you. He said, come back, come back. It's gotten too complicated. He says, I, I prospered you, but I, I still need you to come and check in with me. He's saying things like that right now. He misses, he misses those times when you needed him the most. He, he knows that. He knows now that you're doing better, but he still misses that cry that you had for help, asking for help, checking in with him, knowing that he's brought you through so much. He just needs to hear it. Go ahead, Pastor Mike, whatever the Spirit's saying. I've been seeing where so many have thought they, were been, they had been forgotten or that they were off track the Lord wants to affirm you today that you are right where you're supposed to be. You're right where you're supposed to be. And you have to know this. Imagine you're on a path, you're on a trail, and there's those trail markers, right? Well, the enemy has been trying to give you false signs. And you can no longer agree with false signs that are trying to take you off into the wrong path because the Lord has been bringing provision. The Lord has been orchestrating all these things behind the scenes. And you are going to have, I'm just releasing right now, a discernment and a supernatural ability to discern and see correctly. Where the enemy has tried to muddy the water so you didn't see clearly and that there was false or tra uh, mar markers on the paths and false things. The Lord is removing those things so your path will become clear, your path will become straight, and you have not been forgotten. You have not been forgotten. You've been in the tumbler of the Lord where he's been refining you and preparing you. And it has not been that you're a mistake or that you've made mistakes, but the enemy has tried to get you off your track, but you're not going off track because you're on track. The Lord says you're right on track. And so what you need to do right now is you need to release all the false responsibility that the world and the enemy has tried to put on you, saying that you're not enough or that you've messed it up or that it's too late or you're not good enough. And just like Kevin was talking earlier, it has come to you. The baton has been passed to you. And so the Lord is bringing all the provision. I see packages at your front door. But if you're afraid to go outside of the house, you're never gonna receive it. So it's time to open the front door. It's time to receive your package. It's time to receive your provision. It's safe. I hear the Lord saying, it's safe. It's safe. It's safe. No longer believe the false reports, the false prophecies, the demonic things that have been sent or are done to you. You're going to let them go and you are going to receive because you're going to find that the curtains have been moving and you've been seeing things happening, but the Lord is about to rip the curtains open and you're about to see everything that you've been praying and investing in coming to pass in your life. But you must hold on and your faith and your trust in him must be the fuel that takes you outside of the bunkers that you've built around yourself. It's time to come out. It's time for fresh water. It's time for green pastures in Jesus' name.
Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Many of you have had people that have spoken over you, even from a childhood, of things that were not good, many things that were spoken of you that later on in life you saw come to pass was because the enemy had put them there. Many of you have had, uh, after you got born again and even filled with the Holy Spirit, you've had people come along that seemed like they were God. They were, they were coming with the word of God, the voice of the Spirit of God, and they spoke things that were contrary to what you had in your heart what you heard the Holy Spirit speak to you when you were even young in the Lord. Sometimes it's, for some of us, it was the very first day we got born again. And it seems like these people are the ones that you really trusted and loved. And I'm here today. You need to take that and you need to erase it from your soul. Because those things hit your soul and your soul is holding you back. Your soul is the very thing. I, I'm not into this, you know, inner healing, this stuff like that. And that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about actually the word of God coming into your soul that brings you in line with the spirit of God and what he has spoken to you. So today, this is what I'm hearing. Those things that people spoke over you you, you heard Dr. Kevin say that they never prophesied over him a big ministry. We've all had where they prophesied over us, we'd be a nothing. And I'm here to tell you, Jesus has made it right. You are who God has called you to be. You are to do what Jesus has shown you to do. Now, I'm not talking about, you know, when you got all the goosey bump feelings and all of that, and ooh, God's, I'm telling you, in the nighttime hours, in the secret place, when you were alone, when you were dealing with the, with the hurts and the disappointments and the words that people spoke over you, and they just keep to keep flooding over you. I'm not, I, this is what I'm talking about. I'm talking about when you were quiet before Jesus, and he began to just sweetly deal with your heart. That's who God's created you to be. That's the call that he has put on your life. Hear me today. We are world changers. I'm not talking about a denomination. I'm not talking about a, a, a certain minister. I'm telling you, you are the world changer. Because Jesus himself has appointed you for such a time as this. You could have been born at any other time in life. You could have been born 5,000 years ago, 3,000 years ago, 1,000 years ago, 100 years ago, but you were born for such a time as this. And God has appointed us to release the captives. And those captives that need to be released start with us. All right, so from now on, ministry in your life will be taking from the other realms and bringing it into this realm. So from now on, if you're a minstrel, if you're in the music ministry, you're supposed to be hearing what is being played from the other side and bring it into here to bring in the glory. It's no longer just anointings and giftings. It's not even waiting for a move of God. Or a revival. You don't need a revival. You're alive. What we need is people like you. That's what's in this room came in this room because we chose to draw from the other realm. We chose to yield to the other realm. And there's some of you that I'm going to. I'm going to do something I normally don't do. I'm going to. I, I'm a, there, there's someone I've not met. There's a couple of people in here that you need, you need a boost. You need, you need, you need a touch from God right now. I know the kids 
can give me a couple more minutes. Kids, you, Captain Kevin needs a couple more minutes. You're going to get your shooting of your dinosaurs and everything. Now, there's this, you right here, are, is, is your name Kat, Katia? Okay, I'm not a prophet. I saw her face on Facebook. I've been praying for her for uh, over, I wanted to meet her. You're Katia, right? Come here. Is that how you say it or am I, I'm not? Katia. Katia. Yeah. Okay. So I have prayed for you for a couple of years and I just always wanted to meet you. And I, th- I thought that's her, you know. And um, you, you're one of these people that just needs a little boost right now. And uh, you've, you've done everything you can do, but it's just not enough. It's, a, you know, and everybody can identify with this, but I'm going to pray for you. And I'm, I'm, I'm guaranteeing you that this door that you're supposed to go through, you will go through it. And it will shut behind you. And the rank in the army of God that you're called to will become apparent because you're going to start taking authority over your family, over your domain, over your business, everything. And the Lord says, nothing by shall any means harm you. And the Lord, the Lord says, I, just like you love your family, just like you love everyone around you, I love you. This will put you over. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna you're gonna learn to laugh. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, the Lord says, I'm your friend. All that you've encountered was because they were coming against me. They weren't coming against you. sits in heaven and laughs because his enemies are coming to nothing. And you're seated with them, so guess what? Amen. Amen. Sven, you can't hide. Get up here. And uh, this lady right here. Yeah, the Lord's been speaking to me all service. Just, just, you just need a little bit of push. <sighs> Father, I just thank you. You put her over. Up and over, Lord, she goes. The devil's going to wish he never even touched you. (laughs) Oh, Lord. (laughs) The Lord says they've not just offended you, they've offended me. Lord, I just thank you that healing flows from her hands and from her lips. I thank you, Lord, that she will not withhold, but she will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. She's going to speak to many and encourage many. I thank you, Father, that all of those, even the women that, that will keep their child, 
that will be a mother and, and assume responsibility. The, the great plans you have, Lord, that this woman will be able to speak life and hope into these people and these women. Yeah, wow. <laughs> Up and over you go in the name of Jesus. <laughs> You're so welcome. Sven, come here. <laughs> many good things. So many good things. And he can trust you because he's trained you. And that, that the things that I have for you, I'm going to have to open up your eyes spiritually more because these things are in the other realm. And they're way beyond even your comprehension, but I'm going to help you. Yeah. The Lord says, I, I was with you when you stepped out. And you came to this country. I was with you when you were all alone and you worked really hard. I was with you. I saw ahead. I, I brought people into your life that you were able to hook up with. And, and now, and now you're where you're at because I have sent you. And I put you here. And the preparation, even though it has been intense at times, is that there's going to be an open field. There will be rest for you. There will be rest for you and your family you'll feel your shoulders come down as you start to rest in me and the power will flow through your body you'll wake up at night and you'll be vibrating under my power and you'll know that I am with you and the angel of the Lord will be with you by your bed always working on your behalf while you're sleeping forget the past forget all those things for what I'm doing is, is nothing compared. It's a new thing. It cannot be written. It cannot be spoken. It's beyond words, what I have for you. <laughs> yeah, those ideas are from me. I give you... Those ideas, those, those are God ideas. I give the ability, the abilities from above. <laughs> oh. 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 Yeah. Yeah, you fly a phenomenal jet, but you also will have a phenomenal life. <laughs> oh, oh my God. Thank you, Lord. Release, 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 release. There it goes. All that, all that. All that stuff. Whew. Yeah. All that stuff is gone. Yeah. Jesus name. Oh. Oh yeah. <laughs> I don't want to waste this. Where's Jason at? Brittany, come. Jason and Brittany, get up here. And, and Anna and Andrew, get up here. Oh, my God. Is Jason at the airport? Is he going? Oh, I just. Oh. Thank you, Father. 
Thank you, Father, that you just, you just have your way, even beyond what they can ask or think. Just have your way. Uh, give them the ability to grasp the things that may not be interpretable, but let them grasp them anyway. Lord, all of this, all these things have just been training. All these things have been just to get them to where you can give them what it is that you have planned for them. Lord, I'm so thankful you sent them to Warrior Notes. I'm so thankful for what they have done for us and been there for us. But Lord, what I'm asking is, is that you would now reward them for all that they have fought and stood for in their lives. And that now, Lord God, you've given them the, the family that, that will love them. And love them for who they are. And not just for their gifts. Yeah. The Lord says, we're just getting started. Yeah, I haven't even lit the fire in the engine yet. But you're going to end up glorious without words. Many pages in your books are blank because they're to be written. And your children shall surpass you. Your children shall exceed you. And your family tree is healed in Jesus' name. Your family tree is healed. In Jesus' name, and shall produce fruit. You are the planting of the Lord. And I am so pleased with you. So now we'll finish this up with the glory. We'll finish it up by walking together in the glory. It's all going to be worth it. Oh, waves and waves of our, our Father's love are coming over us right now. Waves of our, our Father's love. Uninterpretable unexplainable, unwritable. <laughs> it's the glory of our Father without words. <laughs> oh my, I'm getting over myself. Oh my, I'm getting over myself. Oh. Oh, everybody in this room, just let go of those last couple of brain cells you have, you know. <laughs> You're holding on to them, just let them go. <laughs> oh. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, the Lord just keeps saying Shemitah. Just keeps saying this. There's something that's happening right now where the new has come in. Everything's canceled behind. It's all new. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Whew, Andrew and Anna. Whew, thank you all. Andrew and Anna, come here. Real quick. Okay, I have a word. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> and the second one is ha, 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 ha. Because sometimes you just have to laugh. Because the devil just throws a fit. And you just have to laugh. Uh, 
I just keep hearing Anna say, I can't hear you, devil. You're all muffled. Oh, you're under my feet. The Lord is, is continuing the miracle. And, it, and there will be a time where there will be no more. No more symptoms, no more anything. I will complete that which I've started. And the Lord says, you've won my heart over. And so I'm doing it because... I want to. <sighs> yeah. Oh. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, the Lord. The Lord always causes us to triumph in Christ Jesus. And I thank you, Lord, that mighty are Andrew and Grace. They're, they're mighty are their offspring on the earth, that they're mighty warriors. All their children were born for this time. And that God has his way. And that God has bring, brought us Andrew and Anna and Andrew and his wife Grace and has caused us to go further than we would have gone on our own. And I praise God. I thank you for this family, for Pastor Wayne and Lisa, the, their parents. Thank you, Lord, that mighty are they on the earth as well. I thank you, Lord, that we'll all be together, hooked up and speaking from the other realm. Thank you. The Lord says, Andrew, you've been faithful and you can be trusted and so I'm going to give you more. The Lord says, thank you for your yes. And you're going to find out what value that yes is going to produce because when you stand before me, you will be shown when you gave me your yes what happened and you'll see the return <sighs> oh, give the microphone to Anna Anna speak from the fire Speak from the fire, Anna. Oh, 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 Kiro to shamatero ko 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 Holy, holy, holy are you, O oh Lord. Holy, holy, holy are you, O oh Lord. Holy, holy, holy are you, O oh Lord. Holy, holy, holy. 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 Shamatarara. There's a scripture that I, I stumbled upon the other day before our warrior fellowship in Tampa, and it was in, I believe, James or John, I always get it confused, James or John 1.5, correct me if I'm wrong, but it says, if anyone lacks wisdom, ask. 
and he shall give it. So I'm just speaking that over everyone here. If anyone is lacking wisdom, ask and he shall give it to you. So I just speak wisdom over everyone right now. Clarity of the mind, clarity of the heart, clarity of the soul that you can ask for wisdom and it shall be provided to you. Ask the Father for wisdom and it shall be provided to you. Ask for wisdom, ask for wisdom and take that first step and just stomp on the devil while you're doing it. Just take the first step and stomp on the devil while you're doing it. It's so simple. When you give him your yes, he reaches out his hand for you. When you take his hand, he starts to walk with you. And as he speaks with you in the word, and as he confirms the word, then you get the unction to be obedient to what he says, and then your life will change forever. And then he will use people to help you, and it will be continuous favor. It will be continuous blessings, but it's not for you. It's for the person next to you. And I thank you, Lord, that everybody in here, Lord God, give them the... The discernment, Lord, to know it's your voice. I thank you, Jesus. There'll be no counterfeit in Jesus' name. I come against that counterfeit right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you right now that the peace that everybody is enveloped in, Lord God, that it remain in Jesus' name, that it's not just for now, that they take it with them, Lord God, that they go out and they go forth and walk out every single page written about them in heaven. I thank you, Lord, that as we become equipped in walking with you, Lord, that we are joy, your joy, your joy, your joy overflow. And I thank you, Lord, for using us mightily in every moment, in every unction, in every, 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 every moment of our life. And we thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. I heard the Lord saying, so where are your accusers now? He's saying over you right now, where are your accusers now? He says, I have lifted your head far above your enemy. So where are your accusers now? The Lord's saying that he's silencing right now in this moment, every voice that is raised up against you, every tongue that has spoke evil or ill will of you, he is silencing right now. He said he's stretching out his mighty right hand upon you and he's lifting you up. So the Lord says, look around and take a good look because where are your accusers now? And then I heard him in the spirit say, saying, brace yourself because there's going to be a deluge of a tsunami wave of victory, 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 victory. I hear him say that his victory is going to overtake you. His victory is going to overtake you. It's an overtaking to where you are going to be overwhelmed, swimming in the victory of the Lord. And he says, you're going to look around and wonder if you're sinking or swimming, but it's not going to matter because he's got you. He says, I've got you. I've had you from beginning to end, and I'm not going to let go now. I'm going to say that again. I've had you from beginning, and I'll have you till the end. So why would you worry now? I'm not going to let go of you. I never have and I never will. Everything that I've spoken about you, I'm just asking you to take the first step, no matter how little it is. The Lord says it may just be a little tiny step, but that's all I'm asking. If you take that little tiny step, you're going to be brave enough to take the next one because I'm going to show you the faithfulness of my hand. The Lord is in this room and he says, today is going to mark something in your life. I feel for someone you said over and over that, Lord, I have this mess. I see this mess. It can't be. And he looks back and he says, what mess? I'm behind you. I'm before you. And any mess that you think you can make, nothing is greater than I am. And I am inside of you. And I am going to take care of everything. He's just asking if right now, if you would just hand it over to him. He says too many times you think you have to do it on your own or you have to clean it all up before you come to him. And he says, I don't want the clean version of you. I want the real version of you. I want that mess that you're holding on to. Will you just let it go? So Father, right now, I let go of every mess I've held on to in my life. God, and I give it over to you and I say that you will make a masterpiece out of the mess that I feel like I've created. Lord, I give it to your hands. You are the creator of all things. Why would we not trust you in this? So Father, I say, just come, Lord. We 
thank you for your victory wave that's crashing over us. God, that today is a new day. This moment is a new moment, Father, and we will not look back to the way things ever were before. But Lord, we're going full force ahead in your victory and your promise with your hand, hand in hand, heart to heart, and face to face with the Father. That's where we will find ourselves every moment, Lord, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I saw all these dead places in your life, these old dead branches of past. It's, it's all been burned up today. It's all gone. There's no more worries. There's no more fretting, no more anxiety, no more stress. But what I saw coming out of this because of what Kevin taught today, I saw you as, he w as this morning was progressing. This is unusual for what is happening this morning. As it progressed, I saw fruit, uh, these buds on your branch beginning to come. And you're going to be so fruitful uh, after this conference. You're going to bear fruit in every area of your life. I'm not just saying that. You're going to see fruit being, uh, uh, you're going to bear fruit at work and, and, and with your family and with your finances. You're going to be a fruitful branch because what happened is all that old debt is gone and the new has come. And you're going to be, you're going to, uh, like Kevin says this sometimes, I, I just see you looking in the mirror laughing. You're going to, you're going to even look different, feel different, talk different, act different, think different. Uh, it, because you're going to start bearing fruit. You've been asking God for that. You've been believing God for that. And the fruit is going to start to come forth. It's going to change everything. And the Lord just spoke to me. And there's going to be a new wine that's going to come out of that fruit. There's going to be a release of the presence of God in your life. There's going to be a flow like you've never seen before. Amen? Amen. Well, I just felt earlier, I was standing right there. I didn't know I was going to come up here. But God is waiting for your yes. And I want to tell you, there is an ignition, an igniting thing going on right now in this spirit. Right now. And in a minute, I'm going to count to three. We're going to say yes. And when you say that, you're going to feel something inside of you change. There's going to be a shift in your spirit. I want to tell you, it's going to be like a match, right? You strike that match and that fire takes off. That's what's going to happen in the spirit. It's already here. I'm telling you, you just got to get in. Some of you are in neutral. This is going to help you get into the first gear. Some of you into overdrive, overthrow, breakthrough. We've been talking about that, all right? How many want to say yes to God? Yes. All right, on the count of three, I want you to give the biggest yes that you've ever done before, all right? One, two, three. Yes! Wow. Just like Pastor Ryan said, everybody's been saying, things are going to be different. When you leave this place today, you are going to be different. You're going to be changed. And don't be surprised because God has just shifted you into the next gear. Amen? All right. Oh, thank you, Father, for the power of the Holy Spirit overpowering them, Lord, that they will be messengers. They will be the messengers that say the things that no one else will say at the right time, Lord, and that the, this will happen, Lord. Oh, the power of the Holy Spirit that will surge through you and the words that you'll speak will paralyze the enemy. And disease will leave at your word. At the name of Jesus, it, the diseases will flee. The demons will flee. Yes, you'll have boldness to do those things which no one else will do. You will do them. You will stand firm. Supernatural provision. Supernatural intervention. Supernatural pathways. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the lightnings, the lightnings of God. The lightnings of God shall come upon you. The lightnings of God. Yeah. <laughs> 
Ik hoor niet bij de drie zo door. Ja. Electrocuted for God. Yeah, welcome to the realms of God. Welcome to the realms of God. Yeah, I got this. I got this, says the Lord. I got this. I got your life. I got I got this. Yeah, it's already laid out. It's already planned. It's already, it's all ready to go. Yeah, you just watch. Shavono Korea stay. Boshota Koshna Karia Sukurashe. Shotoro Sotokurashe te. Domotene Keria Tekia Tokura Base. Ilavianondo Porene Kete Isto. Porra Babaso. Porre, porre, porre. Pour out your heart to the Lord. Balakialato, liavono tomo, shene. Let him hear your vo- hear your voice. Boshate. He misses us, but tell him that you miss him. Lord, we miss you, Lord. We miss you, Lord. We hunger for you, Lord. We love you, Lord. You are our heart's desire. You are our heart's desire. We desire you to no corre. Itala tono. Timatata tilate. Tilato rashe. Pora tekia torre. Pora bate. Pour out your love on him. Mate amo. Ina bande be. Ho makia oso ete ila vono. Itano, don't stop. Mande, horre, vasitave, 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 valacundo. It's breaking open now. Mana le mondo, ilava, the oil and the wine, mania nono, me re me me, ropo soto, a sweet fragrance, a sweet fragrance, shavioto, shoto rafe, o shotoro, hila vete, hila voto, hila voto, hila voto, hila voto, hila viande. He loves us. He loves us. He loves us. He sano, shanore, 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 haveve. Oh, shaveve, 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 kalaso. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Shama tomore. Thank you, Father. We love you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. 
Thank you for loving us, Lord. Shalakoto. Eva yate. Jeshe. Jistakaste. Just stay in your spirit with the Lord all through this day. Stay in your spirit with the Lord. Let that incorruptible seed of the word of the Lord, the, Lord, the word of God that's in you, break past your mind. He restores your soul. He restores your soul. He restores your soul. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Okay, kiddos, you can come on up, have a seat here, F a seat facing uh, Captain Kevin, and we're going to give you uh, some gifts and some special things. If all you parents could hang out just for a little while, all, everybody, in fact, if you could just hang out for about 20 minutes, Kevin's going to share with the kids, it's powerful, and then we'll release everybody, we'll let you know in a moment uh, what time to be back. So all the kids, come up, sit down and face Captain Kevin. Give out, though. Okay, uh, we're going to be starting the next session at 2.30, at 2.30. But if you could just hang, everybody else, if you'd like, if you could just hang for a moment while Kevin ministers to the children, that'd be wonderful. But 2.30 in the next session, we'll start with Kevin. Okay, kids, you got your manuals. We're going to go with something really quickly. Um, uh, how many were able to be with me at the airport yesterday? Okay, so some of you uh, were taught, I'm going to just teach a little bit real quick. We didn't bring the simulators this time because of the, the distance and everything. Uh, so um, just, just uh, know that we're going to be shooting dinosaurs today instead. So it's kind of an even trade, you know, flying an airplane versus shooting di dinosaurs or so we're gonna we're gonna talk about uh, we're gonna talk about a couple things. I'm gonna just go over a little bit about aviation, just a couple minutes, and then we're going to pray. And then uh, Rusty, Rusty's over here. He is a retired police officer, and he's gonna help you uh, learn how to shoot uh, rifles and pistols. And they're they're Nerf rifles and pistols, so they're even allowed in California. You know, so. Rusty's going to be here. Rusty, you can come up anytime. Um, I also got a couple gifts for you too as well. Okay, so the thing that I wanted to share with you before we go and shoot dinosaurs is, is, about, is about aviation, about airplanes, is that, is that um, God has allowed human beings, all of us, we're all human beings, right? Are you a human being? Everybody's a human being here, right? You're, you're human? Okay, God has allowed us to, to be creative. Okay, what that means is, is that you can build things, you can draw things, you can look at something and understand how to, how to make it better. And so people have been able to give us the ability to fly. And God gave people gifts to do that. So all of us, all of us here, all of you have gifts inside of you. But the gifts that God gave you are creative. Okay, do you understand that God created us, right? But also, you know that you can take a blank piece of paper and you can start drawing. And you can draw something that you see. But what you see might not be out here, it might be in your mind. You could, you could take something, that you, uh, some idea and write it out. You can draw or you can write out something. So you, there's ability to create something in, in this physical realm that God gives you in your mind. He gives that to you so that you can create. Okay, so 
This is a fighter jet. This, this is a broken fighter jet, actually. And I wouldn't want to fly this one. Okay. I know there's a tube of super glue somewhere. I'm just going to fix this. So, anyway, this was designed, okay, but it was designed for a certain purpose. So, how many of you have flown on an airplane before? Okay. So what was different about the airplane than from a car? It flies. Okay. So in order for it to do that, it had to overcome a lot of things. So these are heavy. Fighter jets are heavy. Airplanes are heavy. So it has to have something to cause it to, to fly, which are the wings, right? All right. And then you have an engine back here. And that engine produces thrust. So between the wings and the, and the engine, it pushes it forward and it causes the wings to do its job, which causes it to fly. So that's what makes it different. Okay, it's the same thing with God. When, when you ask God to help you, it's essentially you're, you're almost like because you're, you're a human being and you're a person, you're heavy. Just think of yourself as being heavy. So God's got to blow on you in order to create lift. So the Holy Spirit is the one who blows on you that causes you to become lighter. So you can actually do more with the Holy Spirit blowing on you because he, he's God's breath. He's a person, but he's the, the breath of God. Okay, so just like this fighter jet, this looks really cool. And, it, you know, um, these things are sitting... On the, on the ramp, you know, out there at the airport. The one that I flew yesterday was sitting out on the ramp. It looks really cool. But, you know, it's really not doing anything until it's up in the air because that's what it was made for. So airplanes are made to fly. So with you, you're made to do something too. You're, you're made, in a sense, to fly, you know. But you got to have something going over you, through you, you got to have thrust as well, right? Okay, so the reason I'm saying all this is because you take those manuals and you can study. Everything is in there to help you to study about being a pilot, about how airplanes fly, and, and me and my staff have worked really hard to do that. So you take that home with you. But what I want to talk to you now about is, is that God has a plan for your life. So that means that he has books in heaven that he wrote a story about you. So everybody has a special story written about them. Every one of you do. And God has written that out. And he's looking at the book that he wrote about you. And then he's looking at you. And he wants to talk to you about your, your book. Okay? Just remember this, all right? That God made you a certain way because he has a plan. Okay, so how many know uh, you, what this is? It's a rock, right? But... This one is special because when you crack some of them open, sometimes there's something inside. This is a geode. Okay, so this just looks like a rock, but sometimes when you crack them open, there's something beautiful inside. And so this is just like you. People, like the Bible says, you know, man judges by the outward appearance, but God judges the heart. So God sees how he made you inside so this is what you look, what you look like inside is not always a visible on the outside. So people aren't going to know that. So there's a lot of special things that God has for you, but people don't necessarily know that. Okay, so remember that, that God made you very special, but that people only see this sometimes. So don't let that bother you, that people don't really discern who you are and that you are special to God some people will treat you, and they, they will treat you wrongly. Okay, so what I did was every one of you will get a slice of one of these. I got it polished, different colors, so that you can remember what Captain Kevin told you, is that, is that people judge the outside, but God looks at the heart. And so you remember that God loves you. He has a special plan for you, and you're special to him, okay? So the other thing that I'm, I'm going to give you is a magnifying glass because also this is how this is how God looks at you. He looks at the very intricate details, the special things about you that others might not know. And he's always looking at through a magnifying glass looking at you. 
and he's got your back. He's going to take care of you. And um, the last thing is, is that even though this is a rough rock, um, I have a polished stone for you. This is polished, and this is what God is doing with you. He's, he's, he's making you more, more um, do, pliable, more, more uh, rounded. You don't have his, he knocks the sharp edges off you. So how many are around people, they irritate you? That's because they have rough edges, you know. They're rough edges, you know. But they need work. And so God is going to work on all of us and, give, and smooth our edges. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give one of these to you too as well. You remember this. What Captain Kevin said is that, that God sees the inside of you. And that's where the, the special part of you is. And also that he's working on you. And that you're not going to always be like this. You're gonna, he's polishing you up. And you're going to turn out just fine, okay? All right. So I'm going to I'm going to ask you. Uh, do we have all? Do we find this stuff? Are we going to? Okay. Um, I got a bunch of gifts for you. Okay. So I've got. Um, this is what I got for you. Thank you. I got a pair of sunglasses for each one of you. You can choose your color, because the future is bright, and you're going to need these. Okay. I also, I also have a bracelet that has something really cool. This one says I'm beautiful. I did not know that, but now I do. So I got you a bracelet that has something nice on it. Also, I've got a, a watch. I've got 15 different colors of watches. So every one of you will get a watch. And so what I really remember is that God's timing is the best timing. So God has a certain time. So you just remember that. And then I've got a hat here. It um, has Warrior Notes logo on it. Some of them are, have warrior jet on them, different colors. Have I forgotten anything? No, that's it? Okay, you ready to, you ready to pray with Captain Kevin? Yep. How, many, how many talk to God every day? I do. It's really cool to talk to God every day. Okay, so Jesus said this. He said, I'm the only way to heaven. Jesus said it. He said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And, and um, we're all going to pray and we're going to make sure that we tell God that Jesus is the way. All right? Everybody believe in Jesus here? You want to pray? You want to pray with me? Okay, pray this because we're going to commit our lives to the Lord Jesus Christ right now, okay? We're talking to God, so I'm going to take my hat off. We're talking to God. So everybody's praying right now. We're praying to God. We're going to pray to God. Father... In the name of Jesus, say it, say it. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you. We believe in your son, Jesus. We believe he died for our sins. Jesus, thank you for coming into my heart. Thank you for giving me eternal life. I love you, Jesus. Amen. There you have it. Okay. All right. All right. So we're going to give everybody a hat, everybody a, a watch, and then Rusty, um, here he is. Okay. So where are we going to do the, come on up. I want to talk to you. There's going to be a lot of ammo flying here, so I want to find out what's going on. Hmm? I would. I, I do, wouldn't do it now. Yeah. Thank you. Rusty, we got a microphone. Okay. Rusty, um, I hear we got a dinosaur problem in the area. We got some dinosaurs running around. Is that true? Yes, sir. I believe so. Has there been any sightings? Any sightings on the dinosaurs? Has there been? Is there? Is there a dinosaur uh, giving some trouble here? Is there? Okay. So Caesar, Caesar has seen a dinosaur roam in the area, and um, Rusty, Rusty's been trained, highly trained. Um, and he wants, to, he wants to train you on how to shoot dinosaurs. Rusty, tell them, tell them what to expect today. There's going to be a lot of ammo flying. There's going to be some, some, some uh, messed up dinosaurs I hear. I hear so. well, we're going to have a lot of fun. We're going to learn a little about gun safety. Gun safety. Following directions. Following directions. 
And shooting a lot of dinosaurs. Uh, and sh shooting a lot of dinosaurs. And shooting a lot of dinosaurs. Are y'all excited? Okay. All right, everybody get your color, your favorite color of sunglasses, bracelets, um, watches, and then the stones. You ready to tell them what to do? Okay. All right, so we'll see. We'll see everybody at 2.30. Okay. Okay, thanks, Ross. All right, kids, you're going to follow Miss Abigail. Abigail, wave your hand. And whatever she says, wherever you go, that's where you'll go. <laughs>